The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. here so you're expecting something to happen bunkhouse stampede that's what's happening click this kevin ash podcast he's kevin i'm sean how was your week uh good they beat you up last weekend with your road schedule you the 10 stops you were uh, uh you you were a shell of a man actually last weekend i was um or this weekend i was in um cincinnati I did a uh, horror con in Cincinnati. Me and, me and X-Pac signed um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that was, uh, I tell you, man, fucking, as you get older, those things, they, put, putting on a smile for, for three days is. <laughs> <laughs> what did people run into on Sunday at about 2 p.m.? You know what? <laughs> there was this, this, this guy, this guy walks up to me. And he he looks down at me, at, at my table, and I've got you know at this point, you know, I I I, I just want to say first first off, man, that the the NWO fans are so loyal. I love them with. I mean, it's just I, I I'm so blessed to have uh, to had that as as you know part of my life. Uh, it's still a part of my life. It's it, it's for life. I mean, I'll, uh, that that NWO will 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 go with me to my grave. And um, so, you know, most of the pitchers were were picked were were pretty picked over by, you know, the super shredders were gone. Uh, any of the Punisher stuff was gone. Um, I don't have any dog pictures yet. I need probably need to get some dog photos. But anyway, so um, this guy walks over. He kind of got kind of looks like Simon from Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, okay, Paul Simon. Yeah, looks like looks like, looks like, looks like Paul Simon. He's kind of. Yeah, kind of, you know, like look at this. It's kind of got this, you know. Yeah, you know, never really, uh, really was uh, much of a wrestling fan. I mean, I watched it periodically. I said, "Yeah, I'm kind of the same way on gay porn." And he stops and looks at me, and then looks back down at my table. And I'm thinking, like, okay, at this point, he's going to spin and just tell me to f off. And uh, but he they, rubs no, one out. But no, yeah. no one ever does. And nobody. That's like, you know, I'll get a thousand tweets like, oh, I'll jump if I ever see you there. I'll punch you like the old man. I tell you what, boy, I've never had anybody come up and just say, you know, you know, I'm that guy. I'm the one that's you know been, you know, been been telling you about. Them. I'm coming so, and. Uh, so the guy like looked around, and then he went to his back pocket and dropped fifty bucks for an autograph, and it was a wrestling shot. Oh. And I'm like, he like, wow, like it's almost like the, the is he like did he want me to did he want to lick my boot? You know, did he like make me lick make make me lick your boot? Yeah, maybe Here a fetish, a fetish thing. Like an ass. Okay, now, now, much... now, I'll, now, I'll, now I'll pay fifty dollars. But so he's clearly a wrestler. He, either he was a wrestling fan, or he's he's in, he's got a fetish. He he always wanted to meet a wrestler in person. If you offered him the boot, he probably would have taken it. He probably you probably would have had a. He probably would have offered him like... eleven soft. He'd have taken that too. <laughs> well, that goes without saying. <laughs> Do we have uh, is Manscape on our our agenda tonight? Um, not this week. Not this uh, so, week. Okay, so I have to say a couple of things. Okay. Because uh, we, uh, we we covered Manscaped, but I've been manscaping for, as long as probably manscaping has been, it was, way, I mean, it, it used to be called, tri- <laughs> we, we used to call it trimming the shaft of your penis up to the base so it, it, Add an inch, add an inch or two? Minimum. (laughs) Minimum. 
And then on top of that, so what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to trim your shit up to the base and then you're going to leave what the kid and play Afro above that. No, you got to knock that shit down. So it's, it's take it up to, this is my, this is my analogy. You go buy a Christmas tree. That thing stays in your house for what? A month. Every time you buy it, the guy puts everything. He, he sets it on. He sets it on the table before they put it in that wrapping, and he takes the, the small chainsaw and he trims down the bottom of that tree. It knocks all those branches off, so you got a nice, like you know, foot, big foot you can put in your tree stand and just grind those. Like, uh. You want me to take it up a little higher? Make it make it seem like you got more tree down there. Yeah, I can knock it off, baby. So you got to have that. And then on top of that, you've got to have the Pebble Beach putting surface above it. Right. And then then we've already made reference to grandma's mustache. You definitely can't have, you can't teabag somebody. I mean, everybody knows there's one string on a teabag and it doesn't go in your mouth. So you got to trim all that. That's all got to be trimmed out. And... We're talking for not, and, and, and guys will say, "Yeah, but I'm not seeing anybody." Now, what if you bumped into some girl? Yeah, and like you got lucky. It's 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 just you know what the the the, the stars are aligned, and here you come, and she's that you you go up to the room, and you go up to her crib, whatever, and you pull your you you pull your shit down, and it's just like, and she looks you like. Does the rest of you turn into a werewolf at any time, or mm-hmm. like? So you got to, you know, you got to be ready. And then just the odor, the amount of sweat and piss in a daily basis that's packed in to <laughs> what they sell you as bamboo, which is actually lycra. You know that. I mean, have you ever smell your underwear at the end of the day? Jesus, try not to. But well, yeah. now now I've got toner and, and, and deodorant, so I mean, exactly. it's, it, yeah. But I was just saying that. Guys out there, you know, that that, that have this uh, loss of hair, like, ah, I really don't need to trim it. Yeah, I, I promise you, you need to trim it because the most important person you date in your life is yourself. Right? Mm. If you're going to twist one off, do you want to twist one off with it? I mean, you want a, you want a, a good looking cock down there that you're throwing. Yeah. You don't want to sift through. No, and by the no. way, congratulations for being the first person to sexualize buying a fucking Christmas tree. Anytime I'm on the <laughs> fucking Christmas tree lot and the motherfucker's shaving the stump, I'm going to think back to the, uh, the, the gay porn plot that we could uh, whip up here. Like exactly that. Under the know, mistletoe, starring what... Jake Strongbow. <laughs> you want me? You want you want me to, to take a tip on that? What? They always ask. You got to tip the guy when he. When he cuts your shaft. So. Time my cock to the roof. I'm just Listen, saying. Let's talk about feedback from last week. Very passionate outpouring about pizza and whatnot. Um, let's start with uh, Tim Fife, who says, uh, love this week's episode. Never thought I would get two weeks worth of dildo talking um, and weed talking all in the same pod. This is why I love this podcast. LOL. Keep up the fantastic work on the pod. Thank you, Tim. Chris. The tagline for the podcast should be "Come for the bunkhouse, stay for Eleven Soft." Mm. I'm good for that. That's what she said. W W E D X E C W says, "I love the fact that Kevin is seeing the human side of punk. He literally snapped. We all do. We're all human. Sometimes you got to let it out. Plus, you got to, you know, at, at 42 years old, <laughs> you know, I mean, Phil's tired." <laughs> You know, Phil's Phil's tired. He's beat up. Well, you He's were in tired. the ring at what fifty five or something? I was I was at, I was in the ring at I, I was in the ring at fifty five when he was cutting the promo on me. Uh, click click, I can hear your knees. LOL, thought you were dead. Yeah, that motherfucker's cutting that promo on me, and he sits there at forty two years old. Fucking, I guess in retrospect, when I actually like thought about him, like, oh no. He didn't lose his shit. That's toxic fucking shock. He didn't pull his tampon out. He's fucking got toxic shock syndrome. I thought about that. I said, motherfucker. I said, I looked up, I Googled him. I said, 40 fucking two. Dude didn't wrestle for 10 fucking years. 
It's like a fucking, it's like a 75 Eldorado with 102 miles on it. <laughs> Motherfucker, don't tell me you're tired. Don't tell me you're 75. Shut the fuck up. And on top of that, all you guys at AEW, you bunch of dumb motherfuckers. You bunch of dumb motherfuckers. You're 1099s. You you know what that means? That means you got it, you, you were painting somebody's fucking house and you guys got into a fight and they told you you're all suspended. You work wasn't for yourself. It, wasn't it after the fucking deal? You guys can't work that out. You guys are going to but it, I haven't heard that if they're being suspended without pay. No, they're with as far as I know. So the uh, th so they're the fucking cop that fucking shoots shoots the guy twenty three times in the back and then sits internal at his, investigation. Yeah, it sits at his desk. That that's that, that's an effective way to fucking manage. What a bunch of shit. I think maybe that's why some people had questions about the uh, the the work, the validity of it, because uh, they were suspended with pay. So maybe how is Chris Daniels for fucking, show? How is Chris Daniels and fucking Pat? Suspended. What did they do? I was just going to ask what Pat Buck did, and and came, came in with. Yeah, I, I actually heard he came in with nunchucks. They <laughs> both garage edoed the fuck out of him. Well, I well, I don't get it. Who threw the chair? I heard Punk's buddy. All right, it wasn't one of them. I could see that, but no, I think no, they were breaking it up. I don't get it. Imagine Pat coming in and just throwing a chair off one of the young bucks' heads. I don't know. That, that whole thing is not, so now it, it, it's got to the point where it was news today um, that they pulled those characters off the Wednesday show or whatever the fuck's yeah. going on. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> but this thing's out of steam already. Yeah. Re regardless, it's, it's out of steam. And uh... I got a little criticism. I got, I, 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 I've been watching some fucking wrestling. I watched. Uh, raw mm -hmm. and um number one they had a mysterious kid you know is mm -hmm. he's turned fucking heel now and he's fighting edge and it was one of those deals there's a there's a couple uh what's 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 my my ravioli guy's name Johnny, uh, uh, jump, uh, the guy that filmed or, it. No, the, 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 the restaurant I was eating at. Oh, Gargano. Yeah, Gargano. Yeah. So, so Gargano, Gargano comes back after a nine month hiatus. We'll go here first. Comes back after a nine month hiatus, mm -hmm. and he's working with um, oh fuck, uh, Gable. And I, I, I'm throwing a flag on Gable unless fucking unless Kurt Angle said you can just. Do my gimmick fucking verbatim. <laughs> so, so I'm throwing a fucking flag on him. Uh, oh, it's true. It's damn true. So they have a match, and uh, when 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 uh, when Brian wrestled Hangman at AEW, the first was like Hangman's first time that he uh, defended the belt, and Daniel worked his arm. Mm-hmm. And he was so, it, they went like fucking 60 minutes. Well, he worked his arm at the 20 minute point. And it was like, the next thing you know, like Hangman has to use that fucking arm because that's his fucking weapon to, to go home. Mm -hmm. So Gargano fucking, so they, they got a pretty long match. I'd say so they probably went 23, 24 minutes. I don't know for sure. It, but I mean, it seemed like it was, it, it, it was a, a pretty good duration. And I enjoyed them. I mean, a lot of fucking like really good chain and reversals and, which I didn't particularly used to like, but at least it, it there's a it's a feel of uh, believability uh, at least there, yeah, instead of the and, holding and, and, somebody and helping them up to the top. And Gargano world. fucking can I mean he can grab I mean the, the other there was one time when uh when when Gable fucking got him in the in the uh, the, the uh, what the fucking that the ankle lock and uh, he got the wrong foot. And the, and the guy fucking gave him Yiggy, and he fucking switched around real quick, real quick and got the other foot. But he, so he, so, 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 uh, 
Gable starts working fucking the leg of Gar- 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 Gargano. Just boom, boom, boom. And fucking Gargano's selling the fuck out of him. And, and, and Gable's fucking, he's an animal, man. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he just fucking just, he just keeps picking. And, and, and now it's time, but it's not time to go home. So now, Gar- now Gargano fucking has to do the fucking, <coughs> the biggest thing I hate in life. You crawled around the ring and you couldn't get up on your fucking leg until it's time to do high spots. And motherfucking, yeah, yeah. Yeah. then that leg fucking miraculously heals. And then he even, when he rolled out at the end, I said, at least go back to like the cell of the leg here. Go back to the cell leg here. No, he doesn't. He comes down. Theory hits him with the money in the bank. Mm-hmm. So then we go into the theory um Kevin Owen, uh, uh, yeah. seg- segment, uh, and theory goes out and he's like, he was Vince's chosen one. Everybody knew that. And, uh, guys got a good look, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I could see that, you know, and Kevin Owen goes down and get, it does a great blistering, uh, promo. And you know one of the one of the lines was you know like he's been in this business for I don't know how I, I many years Kevin I'll just say twenty yeah and he, and he's seen hundreds of guys like come through like him and not and not be the guy he says but guy he says guys like me guys like Gargano he says we're one in a million that make it like you know like you know and so. Do you get it? Do you get it? And then theory ends up throwing up a, a, a bicep shot, and Owen smacks him in the face. So now that it's like they're, they're, they're going to go, I don't know if it. I mean, I don't know anything about this theory guy, but if that that first exchange of punches, <laughs> if that's any indication of how many times he's been in a street fight, I'm going to say minus three. He's never been in a fight in his life. And Owen is trying. Like, uh, Owen is trying not to just own him, but they go and they and end up. In, and, and, and Owen's just Owen. You know, Kevin's fucking potatoing the shit out of him, man. <clears throat> so they 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 finish it up. They they, they have a break. They break, they break it apart. And um, I'm thinking to myself, like, God, man, I I'm, and I could, I you know, the the camera angles are moving and shit. And I I can't see whether or not like I, it looked like Owen hit him with some a couple of stiff ones. And uh, I'm thinking, please, man. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing theories back. I'm seeing theories back. The camp, the, the uh, handheld comes around, and theory's got uh, blood coming out of his nose, and blood, a little bit of blood. I, I don't know if it's in his mouth or if it just came from his nose into his mouth. But they sh- they shot up to Owen, and Owen says, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, what was he say? He says, "Um." Yeah, I busted your nose. That, that, that just for starch, you bitch. And I was just like, ah, like that's. And when it, when when you look back at it, it's just like it told a double story. It told the story that was written, but then it also told the story that Kevin cut in the promo, which is you need to look in the mirror because you're not all that, and he mm. ain't. He he don't. It doesn't look like he can fight. <laughs> then we go to the main event. Well, hold on. Before you get off that, I just want to okay. touch them. You're exchanging. Okay. You're, you're Kevin Owens. No, you're you. And you're exchanging with somebody. Okay. And they're, they're soft. They're showing light. And you're supposed to be taking these and returning. Do you go a little s- stiff to let them know I you, you got to amp this if, up? If you can't throw a punch, and, and I think it looks like shit. Right. Cut, I, that's why I, I always cut you off of that big knee. And then I, I would waffle you, waffle you, waffle you, and get you to a corner to where I could do something and then turn you around because a lot of guys just need that. Like mm-hmm. A lot of guys have, have, even in the indie circuits, are used to getting a guy in the corner and, you know, going up on one rope and one, two, whatever they have to, but there's more of a, a, a there's more of a comfort, like a, a comfort spot 
of you having that guy with his back into the turnbuckle and you measuring and throwing punches mm -hmm. as a, a, opposed to what I call a hockey fight, and which I hate because if you throw four or five punches and you're a grown man, man, if, if, if and the other guy throws four or five and you hit each other in the face, that's where I'm going to with this last segment. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're gonna get some 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 uh, 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 you're gonna get an egg in your ear. I mean you're gonna you're gonna bust you're gonna bust the guy up. Yeah, and um, that's what happened. In, and but it was funny because Edge in the last match he he, he gets uh, Dominique and he uh, ties him up in the ropes. So he's you know the the, the crucified the crucified uh, gimmick you know where you're tied up in the ropes mm -hmm. and Edge throws like. Two or three, I mean, Edge started the match off. He threw, like, th two or three, like, punches on the move that were just, I mean, looked like they looked like they they didn't land. But, I mean, just because I, I stopped it and watched it back, and it was just like, man, just, yeah, he's, he's been around for a long time. Yeah, reason, of course. He's, he's, reason, he's the reason that he's in the Hall of Fame. He's, he's really good. And he's so good that he has uh, Dominique in the ropes, and he throws he throws like two or three punches <coughs> uh, in Dominic's face and realizes like if this was a shoot I'd bust him open yeah and so he changes it to smacks he changes it to smacks like and, and I could see him register I could see his brain register that like now I can't continue to do this I'm thinking to myself like why wouldn't the referee at that point like why doesn't he jump in there? Well, that's a good point. And uh, it, this comes down to what I was going to ask you before about training. You were talking about um, you were talking about telling the story and the leg, right? And you know you're yeah. you're selling your leg for twenty five minutes. The twenty sixth minute can't see you bound up three turnbuckles and propel yourself off into the air because it's counter to everything you've established. This is this is a it should be a wrestling school thing, isn't it? A like you've worked in the ring more than six months thing too. There are veterans in the locker room, there are trainers there, are producers there. Is this not something that would be stressed? Nobody would pull someone aside, or is it just still all about the visual dynamics of the circus come wrestling ring? I know that you know. I, I, it was. It's funny. This this t shirt's got like a weird neck pick on here. Can you see anybody else see this? You're right. What, what? No. What are you doing there? Well, it's like the. I don't know, man. I mean, actually, it's it's the opposite way because I'm looking at this. Yeah, you it's got like a pull. It, it's like stuck on. It was my... off. Was it off center? There? I don't, it was. I don't know. Yeah. It just. <laughs> you got a little of the Gaylord Perry under there. Maybe it's sticking. No, I I trained back today, so my fucking. I, my back's all jack, so I just pull it a material, brother. Um, no, it's. I, I think one of the things, and I, I don't know what the schedule is now, but you know, it's. It was such a different um, atmosphere or such a different situation when we worked, especially in, in the WWF. Now E, but when it was the WWF, you know, when when like when Brett was champ and. Uh, in like '93 and and th that era, where you would go on the road and say I would work sixty matches against Double J before we would, because you know you only had five pay per views, so you didn't touch on a pay per view for you know like by the time somebody saw you have a TV match with somebody. You had already worked every kink possible mm -hmm. out. So, see, that's – I don't know if these guys have touched before. I doubt they have because Gargano has been gone for nine months. So I doubt that these two guys have touched. So they're in the back putting this thing together. They're both pros. And it's like you can't – you're going to get a go home. When the referee says, you know, you say he'll, you sit in the back, and it's just like, you know, 
referee will come up. He said, "What do you guys want? You know, what do you guys want for a cue?" And said, "You know, give us fucking give us a a, 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 a three minute go home, because mm-hmm. that's how long it's going to take us to, to 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 take it to the finish." So, um, and I I know this is probably news to some of you out there, but this. This shit's timed because there's commercials and all kind of stuff. It's a kind of complex little deal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's not like MMA where you just you know beat the hell out of the guy. And just, I'd, I'd love to <laughs> for them to have to you know. I'd like them to just. I was thinking about that too. It's just like how 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 much easier would it be if uh, professional wrestling was in the MMA? Like you had a, a five minute, uh, um, you know. Like a five minute, uh, like a round system. Yeah, because like imagine, imagine how, how how MMA would be if you just rang the bell and it went <laughs> until somebody won or to somebody lost, and the same in pro boxing to the death. No fucking. I mean, can you imagine pro boxing those heavyweights. Those guys by the, by like two forty in the first round, you know, are, are, are ready for oxygen. Mm-hmm. So. I used to always like when uh, Ali would stand. Yeah, you know, he'd stand in the between, corner. Yeah, yeah, he'd stand between rounds. You see, the, so sometimes he used to do that. Yeah. So who else Foreman, used to Foreman do that? did it because I think he was just he was so he was big. making a point. That's when he came back though, right? Didn't he do that? When well, he I came just back? think he was so big, just getting up and down. He was like, man, I ain't That's doing true. this shit. <laughs> but no, but it was actually I, again, you know, I mean, it just I'm just pointing some things out. But I mean, it's just like I said, I don't know if. If uh, if those two guys have ever touched before, now if you haven't ever touched before, then it's you still have to. It's, it's still there's still no excuse for um, unless you're doing Monty Python and you're just merely a flesh wound, you know. But uh, if it's supposed to be a believable leg injury, I would imagine that there's somebody backstage in the locker room to pull someone aside and say, "Good match, but listen." You know, if you're going to invest all this time in the story of the leg, you got to finish with it. Yeah, you know, because you can change work. Up your you can work. Fall yeah. off the. Oh, you can work a different body part. You know, you can work we'll it. You, you can you can right. work work the arm, and when that doesn't work, then go you know and, and do something where he misses it and he injures his leg, which makes you smell blood and go after the leg, mm-hmm. which is closer to the finish, and then that work that you put in. You know, but then you almost have to come out of that with a small package or something, and you know that's th- what I was exactly thinking. That you know everyone knows the finisher's coming from the top, but the butt can't get up, falls right. down, grabs him, rolls him up. That's what me and Brett yeah. did with that match that uh, when I lost the title. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't get, I beaten Brett to the point where he couldn't take it, but he, you know, he basically played possum and gave me the, the actually a large package. So, NWO for life says thanks for the shout out, guys. For Christ's sakes, though, it was the Western States Heritage title that makes it even funnier being in Long Island. Another hokey thing they did was fuck up. I didn't know this. Fuck up the time of the show. Show started before the actual time on the tickets. I researched this. Here's the deal: the card was advertised as a 7 p.m. start. Many of the tickets listed 8 p.m. on the ticket. You imagine this is a pay-per-view advertised as a seven o'clock start. The tickets all say eight. And on top of that, the show actually started in the ring at 635. The show ended at nine. People showed up at eight. The show went off the air at nine, which means anyone who showed up at eight o'clock only got to see what, an hour, uh, an hour of action. Unbelievable. And they wonder what <laughs> they drew. They wonder why they drew 6,000 people. At, well, they, yeah, they had no, they had no idea. that was the. They probably had eleven thousand there by the time the night was over. They just say, they, if, early early count was six. They just went with that. Ah, if they just left the doors open by eleven p.m., they probably would have sold the joint out. The boss, y'all forgot one of the wildest front men ever, Phil Anselmo, best front man in uh, from we said the boss. We said, oh, oh no, uh, no, the boss is the person who wrote in. Uh, oh, okay. they were saying Phil Anselmo of uh, Pantera and. Jonathan Davis of Corn and Fred Durst of Limp Biscuit. Even though we know he's a douche, is what he says. A lot of people we could have put on that. I'm sure we left people off. Yeah. It, top it, of it, our head kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, the, and the thing was, too, like somebody said, well, it was just, it was, um, Frontman doesn't, doesn't, doesn't you know, take the women out. But I'm like, yeah, but we were just, 
like when we had the conversation, it wasn't like it's not like we sit here. We're having a conversation. We're at a bar. Mm-hmm. It's not like we have forty five days that we put this thing together where we're, you know, some weeks it feels like that. <laughs> no, there were women we could have put on Debbie Harry Blondie. I mean, yeah, I mean we could actually. I would have put Pat Benatar in there. I mean, there's a lot of women. I you know who was the one Tristan gave us from. Um, Delora who? Delora Sarud. Okay, right. She's from the Cranberries. She we, passed. What's somebody who's else, too? There's a more recent a girl, one. too, that, the dark-headed girl that sings like... Is, what is it? Uh, she's a... She's, she's, she's a kind of a... She's, she, she's pretty, and she, she's, she seems like... She sounds like, you know, like a... Like, Everybody else does that sings that style, but then she. Oh, okay. Never That's mind. the one we got props for. That's the one we got props for, for from people. Yeah, because we. I don't know who I was we, saying. I was, yeah, we, we, was repeating yeah, Tristan. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, because we've seen, we, we. I remember the first time I saw her, it was almost disturbing. Back to the uh, Click This podcast. A word from our sponsor, Better Help. Guys, uh, job changes, uh, leaving a problematic relationship, youngsters having difficulty with friends, school, kids are going back to school, starting high school, starting middle school. People can get lost in their problems and really fail to see a road to a solution. And um, the folks at BetterHelp can help you find a road to that solution it is 2022 folks so the face of everything is changing and the face of mental health and the help and strategies you can have for that is changing too. online help from betterhelp.com listen it can be tough to train your brain to go into that problem solving mode when faced with a challenge you just get lost in the mire in the difficulty of the problem but when you learn how to find your own solutions there's no better feeling and a therapist can help you become a better problem solver making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small um listen i i'll tell you personally i've gone to therapy with loved ones okay and i'm a huge advocate for it having someone to listen to you to objectively offer strategies is just so valuable. I think so. Sometimes you find the answers just hearing yourself talk. You're talking through the problems, and in doing that, you may be finding some of the solutions yourself. Kev, do you agree that sometimes just reaching out and having somebody to talk to at any point in time is just such a viable solution? I think that's one of the biggest problems we have is and especially now that we've become so, um, you know, everybody is just on their phones twenty four seven, and people just the just the social uh, interaction that we had when we were younger is is, is non present. That gives you know like we used to have you know one or two of your buddies that were, you know, with you all the time, and you would you know because you you couldn't be on you know texting and all these things. You're just not going to text that you have a problem. You're not going to talk. You know, but if you're in person with somebody and you're spending time with somebody, there's a good chance you're going to say, man, leave down. Or, or, they, or they're going to be able to read your body language and, you know, say, like, hey, man, you seem down. What's, what's up? And yeah, I that, think that that's, you know, I think that's, that's missing. So, I mean, so you have to, as, as, as an individual, you have to, you know, if you're, if you're having a harder time getting up every day, if you're just not driven, if you're just, I mean, you know, man, like something, something's going on, and you're going to have to address it. And and what better way if you you know than if you if you don't have uh, don't want to bring it up to a support group that that's in your life or don't have a support group that's in your life, then you've got to go outside and 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 talk to a professional and and hopefully you know you know get it clear, get your get your mind get back on track. Yeah, and you know, laying out those problems and. and sifting through them with a professional it eases the anxiety and the depression that can come with it too and that isolationism you're talking about with everybody mm. especially after covid too and then everybody kind of in this phone uh generation where we're um we're really it's so easy to just cut off from everybody and I, I listen i've seen it firsthand and and therapy does work get yourself back that's what it's all about right get yourself back they're in there waiting for you somewhere man you know don't go it alone get yourself back 
Um, if you're thinking of therapy, um, give it a try. BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and it's entirely online. Get matched with a the therapist after filling out a brief survey, and you can switch therapists at any time. Um, so when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash click, K-L-I-Q, today, and you'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash click thank you very much better help for being a part of it max randall says sean oliver's a man of culture new jersey native talking about grandma pies i know he has good taste absolutely grandma pies square pizza says kev that brings us to john g square is a hundred percent detroit style come on kev buddies is a detroit landmark buddies louis cloverleaf uh via thir- okay. 313 in austin has done a great job at replicating buddies go ahead okay so you can't have if 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 three places and, and, and you have to realize when I grew up Detroit was the fifth largest city in the country. Okay? Which I believe that like maybe Houston is now, I don't know. But uh for years it was Philadelphia. But I think Houston I mean, I mean Houston might be fourth now. Mm-hmm. But if four restaurants in a city that size serve a square pizza, <clears throat> that's not Det- that's not Detroit pizza. That's those four people's pizza. Little Caesars is who you called, who came to your house with the little plastic little Caesar on the top with the pizza through the spear. He's a guy that came to your house. Woody's didn't come to your house. Lindo's, fucking Tommy John's, all these little hole-in-the-wall bars. I wouldn't go to Six Mile to get a pizza to save my life. Okay? Period. <laughs> I'm going to walk up to the, to the end of Manning Drive and get my two cheese pizzas for five bucks, and that's just it. So when I was little, in college, I think it was up to nine ninety nine. But when little, you were a younger yeah. man, five bucks. I well, I ch- I checked. I googled. They 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 no longer went for five dollars. And I, I want to think it was ninety seven or ninety eight. So two years into our NWO run, that's when there's <laughs> no longer five dollar pizzas. Boy, I tell you what. So then I check. When did Little Caesars make its first? square pizza and consider it Detroit style 2013 the Tesla was made in 2008 so fuck are you kidding me it's like no no that's little Caesars pizza is it's that's it it's a round pizza like I remember when I used to go out to my aunt's house and she had the, uh, she lived out towards the airport in Romulus and um, they had a in, a in a shopping mall I want to think it was God it was on Eureka and something they had a hungry Howie's and they had round pizzas but they did that thing where they cut it like it's a square pizza mm-hmm. so like the pieces in the middle are square and you're, it's like Oh, they cut it yeah. uh, crosswise instead yeah. of into not triangular like, not slices. Like a, yeah. Not like it's a pie. So that, yeah, that I remember every right. time we'd get that, I would be like, "Oh, this is because you can't fold it." What do yeah. you do with? You get a square like this of pizza. What do you do with that? It's like romper room. Nowhere to hold it, even. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. be a mess. No, it's, and then and then, and then the, the, the ones on the end are it's 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 just bogus. But I, I saw somebody saying something about Hungry Howie's on one of the things. I'm like, Hungry Howie's was like, it was like ghetto shit pizza. Like, nobody ate that garbage. Was that a chain? Yeah. Oh, all right. It was probably 11. The only chains we have out here are, well, I guess now, I guess now we, we have some more. But I go down Florida. There's all this shit I never heard of. Uh, Marco's and... Really, CCs the only ones and all yeah, that but shit. That, those, yeah, but that it's like Papa John, uh, Domino's, Little yeah. Caesars. I mean, the ones at uh, Pizza Hut, 
pizza. I mean, those are, those are the ones that the, the, these little. Uh, I remember when I was like on the east side of Detroit, there was a, a Dino's Pizza when I was a kid. They were around for probably I don't know eight years. Uh, you know, they, they, they didn't make it. They, they, they <clears> couldn't do it. They couldn't move a little, a little Caesar. So. Mm. Um, Creature Feature, John Campbell, says, uh, Hey, Sean, would it be possible to get that franchise Shane Douglas workout you were talking about on the Click This Podcast? I greatly appreciate it, as I've always been a fan of Shane's, and as a gym rat, I admired his physique back in ECW. So I brought up, I found the email from 20, like, 2013, I think it was. You're big, like some kind of a pack rat or what? There? And email, well, e- sits, an email it, rat? It sits in the <laughs> file, bruh. It sits in the digital file. You'll get there. You'll, you'll, you'll learn email eventually. Um, now, this worked, I have to say, for me. And, and I'm not a personal trainer. I mean, Shane's a professional wrestler, so I went to somebody whose physique I admired and thought it was probably somewhat natural. How, how, much, how, much, how much did you admire it? <laughs> okay so you tell me what you think of this this worked for me this is uh there's probably new supplements and stuff that you can do but this this worked for me he wrote me back and said uh being a lean guy should i do it a little a little shane like uh being a lean guy uh, to start is a huge advantage for you uh, most 40 plus guys have to focus on lipo light lipostless first or fat burning that's tougher the older you get uh, because to do it effectively, you have to get your heart rate up into the burn range, and that's not easy with tight schedules. Um, so thank your stars that you have that to begin. I would suggest you go to a high rep, lower weight regimen. This means use a moderately heavy weight, but not killing yourself. We aren't pursuing records anymore, just pursuing good health. So I'd stick with a weight that is 50 to 60% range of your max. Do that for 12 to 15 reps per set with very minimal time between sets. Let's say 90 to 120 seconds. I'd still hit each body part two times a week, but do um, differing exercises for each part at each workout. You can find a ton of different movements in mags like muscle, blah, 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 blah. Um, Vary your workouts to shock the muscle and deny any familiarity to your movements by alternating your movements say, an A and B regiment each week, your muscles would get used to the movements. This simulates muscle growth. Also, I'd still hit, this stimulates, I'd still hit at least three days of cardio each week. This will ensure you keep your metabolism up as you begin to gain weight. This should ensure maximum muscle gain and not fat. As for SUPS, I'm a firm believer in creatine. Do not do the load phase they advise on the bottle. That merely ensures you'll have expensively yellow piss. Do the recommended dose after the load phase, and your serum levels will go to where you need them also. As you do the creatine, make sure you drink lots of water to keep your kidneys and liver clear. Kidney um, uh, uh, creatine is crystalline in structure and and as such can make microscopic cuts or tears in your filtering organs like the liver and kidneys. Drinking lots of H2O will safeguard against this. It also helps to take it with a high sugar juice as the sugar helps shuttle it to your cells for metabolization. The other supplement I like is the NO2 formula. There are a lot of brands on the market. Uh, Twin Labs makes a line. So how are we so far? Is he hitting the nail on the head? This worked for me. I mean, yeah. I mean, to me, though, like he said... um... Like to get to fat burning, shit, man. It's so it's that's so low of a of a cardio. Like to me, like when I want to burn fat, I I get on the treadmill and I just walk maybe four miles an hour at, at a three or four incline. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just I, I don't want my it, to to me like the one thing you don't want to do is uh, any high intensity cardio. You want to if you want to burn fat, you've got to you know you've got to you got to put time in. I mean, that's, you know, Ronnie Coleman used to do like, you know, hour and a half, you know, twice a day on the treadmill. Mm. That's not because the last thing you want to do is you don't want to break down muscle tissue. You don't want to break, you don't want to bring up your cortisol levels. Okay. He goes on to uh, tap the The only other thing is testosterone. You were were saying about, you know, shock the muscles. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always like, thought that was just important as as peter gabriel once said it was a shock the monkey right you could sing shock the muscles for us right now for your weekly uh, song if you want to jump in with that how about the monkey how about testosterone do you take test do i yeah yes i take i take uh, testosterone replacement therapy i take 220 milligrams 
Uh, I'm supposed to every seven days, but man, I got to give myself my own shot. So it's it's probably close to every ten. It's mm. like drill, drilling a fucking twenty three and a half gauge needle in your ass is just not a good thing. Yeah. These are over the counter supplements now. No, oh, God, no. This test- is this is lo- this is longevity. This is a no. None of that fucking that t- that over the counter testosterone is not legit. Uh, no. All right. If you can buy. It's like it's like fucking it's like going to some uh you know Middle Eastern gas station getting and, and buying hash. They don't they're not selling you hash, okay? <laughs> it, it ain't going down. It's some garbage or you know. Ka- kashish. Yeah, whatever. Kashish. <laughs> That's the guy's name that runs the yeah. No, it's just fuck, it's it's it, and the thing is Guys always say, you know, ah, yeah, I don't want to take roids, you know. I, I, one thing, I, I want to get all big. I've been, I've been lifting weights for 51 years. I don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I never was gigantic. I didn't get too big. Like, and I busted my ass. Don't worry. Your body doesn't want you to get big. Your body will, most people, if you're 40 years old and you're just now jumping on the gravy train, that means you're a lazy fuck anyway. That's okay? me. Yeah, you're lazy. That was so me. I think I like, turned 40 and I sent him that email. Said it's yeah. time to work out. Haven't worked yeah. out since high school. <laughs> now, I can then, tell you about square pizza though, like a motherfucker I could. Yeah, but it's at the same time, you know, it's just... How, how do you treat your body like you got like you got to get i don't know i wouldn't want a fucking derby i wouldn't want i wouldn't i mean if you're gonna manscape to get that extra inch the last thing you want to do is have some blubber down there coming up your hog says ron jeremy so yeah but he was a fucking he was the, he was the hedgehog he was the fucking hedgehog he Dude, was a, he, 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 I, that, if he would have fucking manscaped that motherfucker would have had to have like the an, an actual like landscaping crew come out if he shaved he when he got a heart on he'd look like the letter q remember i remember one time man we were we were, we were kids and somebody had a it was a vhs of him it was like a some guy was with some girl in a in a uh, like a warehouse, and Ron Jeremy like they started getting it on, and Ron Jeremy was watching, and he like you know like he had him blown himself. Yeah, in the he video. did the uh, he did the Lanny Poffo. Yeah, right there. Well, I've never I, I I I did I did witness Mr. Jeremy, and then what this is this is a great story. So. Scott and I are. There's some strip joint that's that's on uh, uh, south by the airport, and Scott and I have like like a couple hours before we we got to actually like you know be towards the airport. So Scott goes, Let's just go in there and have a beer and see what the town looks like. So we walk in, and on the paid telephone is Ron Jeremy. Mm. And Scott, I mean, Scott loses it. And he Scott fan, says, he fanboys? No, no, he just loses. Scott busts out laughing. He oh. goes, he goes, Kev, he goes, let's just go to the airport. It's not going to get any better than this. <laughs> and we turned and walked. Left. Left. Scott just said, he, Scott busts out laughing. He goes, it ain't going to get any better than this. Like, we just saw the hedgehog at the paid telephone. In the, in the you, like, it, it's like a little lobby area. Like you open the glass door, look like they took a, a Denny's and made it into a strip joint. <laughs> like a horrifying, like where the cigarette machines would be in that little yeah, exactly. alcove. Yeah, maybe, maybe that where you where you put the the, the claw and you pick up the stuffed animal. I mean, it's the, you, you pick up a a, a, a manscape uh, brush before you go in. Pick up you know, the fucking pick up a dildo from the Bills game. Just throw it. <laughs> you want you know want to know what's funny. I met I met Ron a couple of times. One of the times I met him was at a strip club in uh, in uh, in South Jersey called uh, Fantasies, and uh, Ron was there and he was uh, he was selling cigars. He had a line of cigars and he um, he did stand up comedy that night and he was not very good. Ron's in a little trouble now, as we all know. He was uh, I had a solo podcast at the time and he was actually on the week before he went away and. Um, 
I'm, I'm not it's familiar. What, he, what did he do? Well, rape. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he's uh, a few women have come come forward and uh, and had accused him of uh, forcibly uh, uh, raping. I guess would be the word. Uh, no. No way to make that polite. So, uh, no, that's, 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 I, I didn't. I don't know the circumstance, circumstances of the story, how it happened. I think or, somebody that's a rapist is, 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 is. I mean, that's as low. That's as low as a human can be. If you rape somebody, it's like, if you're a murderer, I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I do though. I get it, man. If you're a murderer, I mean, you could just you could lose your shit and. Kill I was gonna somebody. say, hasn't every person come to that precipice of uh wanting to put well, their that, hands around I, someone's I think throat that's, i think that was the fucking whole thing with oj every guy on earth said man i've ever caught my old lady if i can do it i'd cut, cut her head off well oj said okay yeah i pretty much feel the same way hmm. hey hey al you doing anything tonight <laughs> gas up the bronco bro <laughs> AC. Too soon? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. The um, as, as Steve or Dominic, find, find the charges for Ron Jeremy so I didn't uh, uh, incorrectly uh, uh, say what he got sent up for there. Let's just throw uh, human trafficking in there before we hear it. <laughs> Let's just throw it in. It's, it, seems, it seems like a, 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 the newest thing, you know? It's funny. You know, it's, it's kind of sexy to say, human trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Monday Night Football returned, and uh, you know Raw's ratings dipped, and so it was all it was in all the stories, you know, all the websites that carry those ratings. How much uh, did they? How much did they dip? It was down seventeen percent. So the the Monday Night Football two Raw rating was a five point four nine Monday Night Football, a zero point four four Raw. So I wanted to bring up a a table that compared. Historically, Monday Night Football and Raw. So I have this, um, and it, it, there's there are a few interesting trends. Oh boy! Can you make we, that a little can bit we zoom, smaller. Can we zoom on that at oh, all? Fuck. You could, that could, my, there dude, we that go. could be in fucking Mandarin, and I could be. <laughs> those of you listening and not watching, we got a like a bra- it looked like Braille from where we were. So uh, ninety eight. 99, these are the years that I correctly predicted would have the smallest spread. Like, let's look at, I jotted a few dates down here. So let's look at um, October 11th, 99, 10-11-99, a 6.5 to a 10.4. So that's four points only. You look at later yeah, on. Yeah, God, it's the Jaguars. Oof. And Jets. <laughs> Uh, eleven twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, this was this was Packers and 49ers, Although at the time they were uh, they were in decline. It raw. Seems. So and raw. This was the, raw, raw is love. Any any correlation with the Packers? Uh, doubtful. Dude, love. I'm guessing six point oh. five. At to a thirteen, so that's that's six point five. Is that, is that measured from the crack of your ass? That's from the crack. Okay, look at the fucking numbers you guys were doing. It's just amazing. So what starts to happen then? Look at look at the last one. Look at the forty nine or yeah. Look at that six point five. Five to, to ten. To a a 10, three 10. three point five spread. Now also bear in mind, this is when Monday Night Football is on network. They didn't even move to cable yet. This and is there, Channel there's, 7. There's no Thursday night game either. No. 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 Not they, not in these years. No. This is when they started they, they started to think like we may have to you know this this wrestling continues to Now this starts to slip a little. Go down to like uh I don't know, I guess two, 2001 now. Now the, yeah, uh, now, right in yeah, here. Yeah, see, that's O2. See, the, that's when I started making movies. So that, of course, that's it's, 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 you know, nobody's going to watch Exactly. No Nash. <laughs> so, so, I was so, tired. I was so, tired. So the spreads start to become like eight and nine points now. I was 44. I was tired. But, so, But that was the Come golden age, quad. man. That was the golden age. 89, 90, 2000. 
that was the, you were talking three, four point spreads. Some weeks, there's some that are a little bigger, obviously, but um, the uh, the numbers were remarkable. For all you old school guys out there, you remember it well. All right, it is time for the stiff one of the week. Okay, and um, we are we are going. You know, football season's back, and uh, as we were just mentioning, uh, Monday night football. Now, guys, you're going to be up later now. Okay, you're going to be watching uh, Thursday, maybe. Uh, uh, Sunday nights go late again. Monday nights go late. When you hit the sack after a game, if your partner's good to go, you might want to do something to guarantee that you are too. All right, and that's where Blue Chew comes into your life. Guys, it's all just about that extra little confidence, knowing that you will answer the call when tapped. Blue Chew is the unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night. Uh, You can plan ahead. Be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The process is simple. Just go to bluechew.com, sign up, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Best part, all online, baby. Talk to someone online, you get your script, um, and then it is delivered to you, okay, discreetly, made in the USA. With Blue Chew, men everywhere are ready to go after the game. Not too tired, not too many cocktails, ready to go. Um, if you feel that you could benefit from such confidence, Kevin has ensured that you can try this for free, okay? So you can use the promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 so they can ship it to you. That's bluechew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank Blue Chew for getting on board with us. So, Stiff One of the Week brings us to uh, your friend, Scott Hall, and... uh, uh, this was one, uh, one, on one of our shows. Uh, it was on a U shoot, and um, about Vince McMahon in a meeting talking about his first homosexual experience. You were there too, Kev. Let's see. I remember when Vince called me in. You got to remember, this is a whole different era. That we're not allowed to fight on the floor. You don't hit guys with chairs. Nothing. It's all, and they're real big on family entertainment. And so Vince calls me and, and, you know, they're doing the Goldust angle. And he goes, we're going to do this Goldust angle. You know, we're going to do this thing with you. And he goes, you know, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be in love with you. And I remember thinking, thinking like, what? Like, I just went through a long angle with Sean. Then I worked with Kev, who's like a big killer. And then, like, I'm thinking. And he goes, let me tell you about my first homosexual experience. And I remember sitting, me and Kev are both sitting in Vince's office at TV. And my, I looked at Kevin, my first thought was, as opposed to your most recent, <laughs> like you and Warrior on a bearskin rug. But, sorry, Vince. But, uh, I remember, you know, he was telling me about... And, and and what the hell did he tell you about? No, he, he was telling me about when he was living in North Carolina, he said, I was hitchhiking one time. But see, I, and I don't know anything about Vince's past, but I'm thinking, hitchhiking from where? The pool to the country club? Like, what? And he said some guy picked him up and was like rubbing his hand on his leg. And, I'm thinking, okay, now you tell me, well, what does this have to do with wrestling? But I remember being a little resistant to it Terry because Garvin, I remember being really resistant to Tremendous. it because that wasn't the way we were doing business then. Now it was great, and it did a lot. You know, they put a lot of time in it, you know, and everything. And I just, I don't know. It was. If you look at the early Gold Dust stuff, do you it remember it, really Kev? Do you remember the meeting? Across oh. sexual vibes. Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Scott, Scott and I have had have, have, uh, rehashed that conversation numerous times. Yeah, got a got a props God, for the bearskin rug it, reference. It, uh, it's just, I I swear it's you. I was so blessed to, to spend like thirty three years of my life with that human being. I mean, it's just like oh. I didn't know what because I don't know what, what you're gonna pull up. So I mean, to me, that was that's. Uh, and then it was like later on, like so, like the the angle goes a little bit forward, and um, Scott's sitting there with 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 his son, you know, Code, and him and Cody are watching it, and like Goldust unzips his 
his outfit, pulls it over, and there's a heart that crosses his razor. Mm-hmm. And Scott's got to explain to his son why this freak got a heart. Uh, How old's Cody at the time? God, maybe, maybe 10, 11. That's great. En- en- enough to scar you. Yeah. Scott on this, uh, at this shoot was, it was typical Scott. The interview was great. And that's all I care about. I, you could be difficult to me as long as what goes out to the audience is This is the one where he told you that the envelope was a little light. A little light. <laughs> it wasn't even my deal. I didn't know what he was talking about. And then he wanted to go have sushi. The, the slate comes in. It's, I'm like this, right? We're ready to go. It's like, okay, marker. Can we speed this up? There's some people wait for me with sushi downstairs. <laughs> what the fuck? Whatever. So, but there was another time when um, you were being, um, Kevin's a notorious prima donna. So he was in his uh, Patti LaBelle phase and he calls me complaining that too many people are driving him. I, I, it wasn't even my deal. I didn't bring him in. I was going to work with him one of the nights. Uh, uh, we were going to shoot a show. And uh, he called me. And you're like, got one guy picked me up at the airport. I got another guy drives me to this signing. And another guy's going to drive me to you. I need some consistency. So I said, okay, I got it. Okay. That's okay, a prima Patty. donna. Okay, that's a Patty. Prima donna. That's, a, that's a prima donna because I drive every fucking mile of my life. And I've got people that shouldn't even have a license driving my rich fucking ass around fuck you fuck them fuck that right r- r- rich ass doesn't make you look like a prima donna i, 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 I use that phrase but anyway listen oh, well, it, hold on it's not the it, point of the story it is the point of the story you're calling me fucking patty LaBelle. i don't even know is patty LaBelle, i don't know have you ever met patty labelle is she she's really a diva a, she's a diva she's a diva oh jesus all right so so i so I said, Kevin. And you're a Jersey guy. Okay, let's go. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to drive. You were you an hour pick- and a half away. I said, I'm going to come get you. Don't worry and, about and it. And what did you come pick me up in? A car. A BMW. No. Yes. It was a Benz. <laughs> or a Benz. As so, I said, you, you picked me up in a fucking, a, a, a proper gentleman's car. Ah, yeah, of course. It was the first car that weekend <laughs> that... Actually, what was was built in this country, you know, and what I and what I send you back to the airport in. I got your town car. Yeah, because I treat you right. So, uh, so I I don't see what the argument is. The argument should be the jack offs that 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 treated me like that's that's why people all the times they say you know you'll come in and, and I'll be like no you'll get me car service. Because I don't, you know, I don't want to drive in your wife's Hyundai, you know, that she hasn't cleaned in six years. Like, that's not being a diva. That's being fucking OCD. But can the D stand for diva in that? Oh, no. Okay. It can stand for, I'm not going to, I can't stand, I can't touch change. If I get in your car and there's change all over, <laughs> it like. You might as well be. You might as well fucking ta- hit me with a taser, tape me up, and sodomize me the entire fucking trip. Like it's it's brutal. Well, th- listen. You, sometimes you're brought in by you know not the most uh, professional not, outfits in the world. Well, not that's why that not anymore. Right. Well, this was some time ago. Anyway, I got to yeah. get to the point of the story. So yeah. I say, Kevin, don't worry about it. I'll handle your trans for the rest of the weekend. I'm going to come get you, and I'm going to I'm going to get you back to LaGuardia the right way. So I come down. You're doing some signing, which is going too long, and um, and Scott's there. The whole point was Scott. So Scott's there. He's he's signing with you. You're sitting next to each other. So you were upset. So I came in. I went right to you, and I guess I walked by Scott naturally. I went to you to say, "Are you all right? You know, we're gonna you know we're gonna hit the road." With Scott goes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, nothing? No hello? Nothing? So I just thought that was classic, Scott. I'm coming here to handle a crisis with Kevin, and he's going to take issue that you were spoken to before him. It was great. 
But it wasn't that the same deal that some guy tried to do some shit back ass to you and we had to put him in place? Or was that a different well, one? Well, all right. So maybe I had some ulterior motives for coming down and picking you up. Yeah. But. So 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 this so he's gonna call me a fucking diva when he basically wants to use me for muscle. What a fuck that's just, this is this guy's shit. No, right? no, you don't uh. remember what I did? No, listen, you and Scott were gonna open the show with an NWO promo. <laughs> And I took you and drove you back before the show started so the guy wouldn't have you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we, yeah, we, well. Yeah, so in other words, we're, <laughs> we're the divas, but, but, but Sean Oliver can't wait till this guy gets what he wants out of us. No. No, he, <coughs> uh, he tried to fuck me on a deal. That's it. He did. You, you go down. You go down when that happens. He, he did try to fuck you. All I had to say to you was, I said, Kev, you've been signing a long time, huh? And you're like... <laughs> told me i was done at eight it's eight twenty. i was like i think you gave him the 20 minute promo right here in the form of autographs are you ready yeah boom we were gone <laughs> i don't have enough i never found out what happened scott walked that to was, the ring and you weren't there did he even know we that, left that was such a diva so that's what a diva move of me as <laughs> as i'm coerced by you to do it the other guys not okay oh he is a diva he he, he now showed his, his his promo florida man or jersey guy Brings us to Florida man or Jersey guy. Um, two headlines. If, it, if, for the, anyone. if the Jersey guy's a lying motherfucker like you, I'll just say, yeah. Jersey I guy. never <laughs> lie. I'm honest to a fault. All right. When someone's a diva, I call him a diva. I'm honest to a fault. Of course, I have the safety of, of uh, doing this over the computer. You're not next to me. All right. One headline from... Uh, Someone in Jersey, one from someone in Florida, and you're going to tell me who the Florida man in Jersey guy is. You have a very good record in this, um, I, I must say. All right, first headline. Well, this is a female, so it would be a Florida chick or, or Jersey chick. Barefoot drunk woman karate kicks the cops again. And the other headline. Man gets tired of waiting at hospital, steals ambulance, drives home. One is Jersey, both one is pretty, Florida. Both pretty generic moves. I, I just, I see that, I see the, the roundhouse kick coming off of a, a porch of a mobile home somewhere in Kissimmee. So I'm going to go, the karate chick, dude steals the ambulance, Jersey guy. Okay. Good guess, but it is opposite. Ah, we have the uh, my my streak has been broken. We have a young woman uh, getting arrested for the third time. Uh, her name was let's see her here, Franklin, New Jersey, gets a call about a forty four year old woman named uh, Sheila Celatano. She was driving drunk and barefoot when the cops tried to arrest her. She ran away, then, quote, karate kicked both of them in the chest. Uh, she was so drunk they called an ambulance. She'll kick the EMT in the stomach as well. Very good. And then uh, let's see. The ambulance was She's in. She's a badass. What part? Yeah, pretty much. Oh. oh we've all dated ones like that. There he is. Look at him. Uh, Senator Cruz. There, a little bit, right? He does have a little of the Cruz. If you cleaned him up. That's how he looked when he was down in Cancun after a couple of drinks. He, uh, let's see, who is this? This is uh, a patient lost his patience and stole an ambulance, according to the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Investigators said this all went down Tuesday night at the Villages Hospital in the Villages. The Villages highest, for anyone that high, doesn't know. Highest, huh? highest uh, uh, per capita of sexually transmitted disease in the world. So this is like a retirement community, right? That everyone yeah. went down. And they have, it's like a, it, they have like, sw like these 80 year old swingers and shit, right? It's, oh, it's, it's we were going to do a show called The Villages. Um, and Reed Carroll was, um, who, who wrote the, ma the, ma the magic mics, all of them. Yeah. A and Dog. Um, and I was going to be like the guy that was just in. You know, like the 55 and over, and I was the 57-year-old. <laughs> like, I was like the American gigolo of the place, you know. That with would my, have been. With, with my with my pocket full of blue chews. That would have been great. Manscaped up. That. 
that it, it never it never uh, it never shot, or you just weren't in it. No, we no we didn't we didn't it, it never came to fruition. Uh, okay, actually, I, I, actually, yeah, because Chan, Chan went through some things in his personal life, and it you know everything was kind of. But Tatum was going to be in it too. No. Oh, I thought no. you said Channing went through. Yeah, no, I mean he, they, he, they were going to executive produce it together. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, it uh, there is a documentary though about the villages. I forget what it's called, but if you search it out, you'll find it about uh, what a an odd insular world it is down there. Only in Florida could you do some shit like that. You know, and, ge- I, and guess how they vote down in the villages? Oh, I'm going to say overwhelmingly red. Would be my guess. Because you know, you know, you know, you know why. You know why they vote red? Uh, okay, when you, when you have when you have a a, a a a Republican who's a billionaire, okay, <laughs> he's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Now, now he's the ex president, mm-hmm. but you get the, and you, a guy that did. I, I mean, a knockout job. Nobody can say he did anything wrong while he was in office. I mean guy was was pretty much spot on everything he did came a little bit short on the wall but besides that guy spot on but i've i've always was curious you know people always this is one thing that and this is this is you know this isn't satire sarcasm or anything else people will tell me nash why do you hate donald trump so much i'm like i don't hate donald trump i don't know the man i've never met the man I don't have the ability to give him that much real estate in my brain. I just don't think that he was that great for our country. And, but then I think about it, I'm thinking like, no, wait, because when there was the vote count, he got Portman and Wright out of Columbus, Ohio, you know, which you would think that, you know, who wouldn't want to make a name for themselves uh, with the president uh, being screwed out of an election, right? Think about it. Like, this is it. Like, this is my F. Lee Bailey moment with this law firm. Is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up. I'm going to go from state to state. We're going we're gonna to get, get this thing turned around. There's not going to be an insurrection. We don't need an insurrection because we're going to take care of this the proper way. But for some reason, everybody that got involved early in the vote count all the firms that, with any credibility, bailed, and he ended up with a Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani as his mm. legal team, which seems strange. When I mean, if it's a no-brainer, I mean, forty percent of our country believes that the the that this Biden character, who all he does is cause inflation. I mean, the numbers just came out there, 8.3. I mean, it's got to be this guy because, well, I mean, granted, Great Britain's were 9.9, but this guy seems to have control of this whole inflation thing where he's just got, he's got some kind of, he's doing some kind of thing there. And I can't figure out quite what it is, but he's no Donald Trump. So then we go, Okay. Then we go to Morgan and Lewis, and they decide that they're going to take on the uh, Southern District in the the fraudulent uh, Manhattan tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 whole mm-hmm. they bail. What? They bail? So, and then of course they cut the sweet deal for the, the CEO or CFO or whatever the fuck he was. Odd job. Then we go to hey. Ex-President Donald Trump, billionaire, Republican, super sweet ex-president man. You think maybe we could have those classified documents you got in the back of your house, please? Wow. Well, what's her name said uh, under oath that they were all- Oh, Christine, Christina Bob. I mean, because oh, I mean, and everybody knows. I mean, you know, Christina Bob. I mean, it's just like a, 
I, wait, 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 wait. She's she's with the law firm Neil and Bob, and uh, if you've ever seen her, she's there for one reason, one reason only. I mean, she has she's got. I mean, she I, when I did find out that she got a law degree, degree at Trump University, I, I was a little little suspect. But um, so she says that the she 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 actually writes to the DOJ stating that there are no more uh, top secret, anything of clearance. They come and, and un, you're not going to believe this. Two months later, they do a search of the house, find 20 boxes, 11 of them have top secret and, and, and classified uh, documentation. Wouldn't you know it. So this is my real problem in this whole thing. Everybody's saying, if that were you and I, we'd be under the jail right now. Why haven't they put Trump in, the, in jail yet? I'm at the point in my life with this whole fucking deal. I'm so tired of seeing the DOJ in fucking half guard with Trump that I'm about to stand both of them up and start this fucking thing over. Like, come on shit or get off the pot because if you can take somebody like me and, and i just go okay so where does this go they, they bring in the master baiter to fucking decide whether or not the you know <laughs> the special master yeah the special special master baiter to decide whether or not the shit's going to go further and when push come to shove it's going to go to the supreme court push come to shove he'll take this shit to the supreme court where he's already stacked the fucking deck there. So you're going to tell me that Trump is going to go to fucking jail and bring along with him, because this is part of his fucking deal, his Secret Service fucking crew. Can't. He has to. He, he, he's got to be protected. <laughs> well, if ever... There's no precedent right. for it. No, there isn't. So that's an interesting point. So what would so, they do? So they could could they put him in a in a federal facility with? Uh, no, they put him in Mar-a-Lago and put him under house arrest. So a house has, arrest, maybe. Yeah. So right. is that that bad? You're wait. You're much closer. You're not, you're not, you don't have to keep making fucking excuses for diaper changes. You're right there in your crib. Well, can they say what? Can they can they make his house arrest in Newark in an apartment? 4C in the ironbound now, section you're, you're, of Newark you're, you're, you're instead putting, of putting, Mar-a-Lago. You're putting the you're putting the uh, secrets. You're, you're putting them in a secure in a a secure uh, security uh, situation that it's not advantageous to protect the the. the... See, I tell you right now, man, this is like that that NFL pension when they got OJ. You, you ain't gonna fuck around with this. The Secret Service is gonna watch Donald Trump's ass until the day he passes. Well, that's, yeah, that's the deal. But I wonder in a case where someone's convicted, this just has never happened. They'd have to figure it out. How many years would that take? There'd probably be a special master to decide how the Secret Service is handled, too. Yeah, I, I, I just look at the whole thing and I'm just like, you're going to tell me at some point, like, they're just not going to say, listen. We're gonna do we're gonna do a one page deal memo. You say that you won't ever uh, run for office again, and you said sign this uh, paperwork, and that'll be you enough. Can't, you can't hold office. Yeah, so it's all that's all that's all the, the the world wants is him not to be able to 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 be in any kind of position. I think Rotary Club something like that would be fine. <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> our head Rotarian yeah. Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen, and former president, and former Trump. president. So, uh, no, but I just I, I don't understand how people like why why can't and everybody that lawyers for him has to get a lawyer. That's the problem now is that the legal team needs a legal team. <laughs> I, I mean, what does that tell you? I mean, who's signing up for this? I think Lindsey Graham. 
He was yeah. doing the fucking Potomac shuffle fucking 15. He just went 15 weeks to the. To well, he's busy because there's apparently a new bill he's had in his back pocket well, about the 15 week yeah, abortion he, that he, just he, got he, whipped he out. He took 15 steps to the left yesterday. <laughs> on top of a, on top of a, like a, um, across the board, like 4.5 drop in, 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 the, in the markets. Yeah. Markets got pounded. <sighs> Oh, I don't what, know. They, what did they do? I didn't even. I didn't even look today. I, after I threw up last night, I said, uh, yeah, "When was nine hundred points? Was that uh, today?" Or, I think did the Dow go up nine hundred. No, down. Another. It went down another nine hundred. Well, or was, thir- was that yesterday? I, I don't know what the hell. No, it was thirteen. Yeah, it's now four point six percent. Yeah. I don't guys, know. How does guys, one sleep? Guys, at night? give us. Guys, give us the fucking uh, the market closes today. Yeah, they're looking it up right now. Dow, Dow Nasdaq, and uh, but S&P. seriously, what do you do if you're a firm? It'd be a prestigious thing to represent a former president, but y- you'd be in so in the line of fire for what you you'd be asked to do that uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to to sleep at night. Here's the here's the market. What are we today? We're back up again. Thirty one points. Oh no, thirty one. Up, uh, up, up thir- thirty, up, 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 up point zero nine seven <laughs> zero nine seven percent. And what was that? I can't, I can't even see. What, what, and this what, is uh, what? This is since. Uh, well, this is. Oh, for, the, for the oh for Monday. The, this is the week. So for, Monday. Okay, so for, okay, go go to year go to year to date. I think it's like I think the Dow's down like fourteen percent. What is it down? What does it say up top I there under the thirty one? Bigger. What's that number? Yeah, four, fourteen point nine. Fourteen point nine. Now look at the look at the uh, Nasdaq's like twenty four percent. Look year to date Nasdaq. Not that I fucking look at this shit. Yeah, don't park oh, it tw- there, big guy. Tw- tw- twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. You know, yeah. don't park I, it there. I, I can't oh, I, I, I can't add six and six, but I can tell you what the fucking market's doing. You know, I'll tell you what. This this might make you feel a little better. You know, science tells us the best way to achieve and maintain a consistent deep sleep, even when the market is in trouble, even when it seems like there's pandemonium in in Washington in politics as we know it. Ukraine trying to make a comeback, trying to go over. Um, it's body temperature by lowering your body temperature, temperature controlled sleep repairs muscle after a hard day's work and improves cognitive function. So you can always start your day feeling sharp and alert. This is true. I have woken up. I'm a notoriously terrible sleeper. I've woken up on the floor, upside down in the bed. I was in a hotel recently. I woke up in the fucking bathroom. That's true. My body fights to get comfortable when I'm unconscious. And you know what? Truly, I'm liable to... I might wander into a crime scene someday and become implicated. So if you're like me, you need to take a look at Sleep Me. Sleep Me is the new home for chili sleep which you might have heard of. So we're bringing you the same great sleep that Chili Sleep offer just under a new name, Sleep Me. Sleep Me makes the coldest and most comfortable sleep systems available. They create uh, the environment that meets the body's neutral need, natural need for lower core temperatures. Steve, I'm doing it again. Sleep Me makes the coldest and most comfortable sleep systems available. They create the environment that meets the body's natural need for lower core temperatures, promoting deeper restorative sleep. My wife is using this currently, and she said the first night she lowered it like 60-something degrees, stayed asleep the whole night. Next night she was cold. Temperatures changing up here a little bit. She put it higher. She actually used the heat to help her fall asleep. She can go in both directions with this. Chili Sleep makes the Uller, the Cube, and Doc Pro Sleep Systems water-based, temperature-controlled mattress toppers. They fit right over your existing mattress to provide you your ideal sleep temperature. These mattress pads keep your bed the perfect temperature for deep, cold sleep. They also just launched the new Doc Pro sleep system has two times more cold power than other models is whisper quiet and has a tubeless mattress pad design that allows for five times more cooling contact head over to sleep.me slash kevin sleep dot 
me slash Kevin to learn more. And Kevin's going to arrange for 25% off the purchase price for your new Doc Pro Cube or Uller sleep system. The offer is available exclusively for Click This listeners here, all right? So only for a limited time. That's sleep, S-L-E-E-P dot M-E slash Kevin to take advantage of this exclusive discount and wake up refreshed every day. All right, Bunkhouse Stampede time. We're back. Click this, the Kevin you know, I gotta say, I got to say something about this whole podcast gig, right? Yeah. It's like, so I, like, we get all these products sent to us. Yeah, so, we try them. So what we are yeah, telling so, you I the mean, truth. Like, so, so I'm sitting there, you know, laying on this this 60-degree comfort setting mm-hmm. with a blue chew in my gut, just ripping a fucking <laughs> just, I mean – boned out like nobody's business and i can see every inch of this son of a bitch because i'm manscaped you put i mean put it all together uh, yeah i mean it's it's like why and and you you wonder why i'm a diva i mean i got it better than elvis at the fucking hilton you got the life got the life telling you man you know who doesn't have the life i would hate to be Abdullah the Butcher's Tailor. I mean, Ooh. imagine you're running a shop in Atlanta. Abby fucking walks in, whips those tits out, and asks you to make them something that makes them look good. I mean, talk about a pressure situation. That is like a fireman being called to like the, 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 the towering inferno, the shark hunter being sent out to snag that great white in Amity. With Robert Shaw, it is the challenge of all challenges. What do you do? You got to do your job. You got to be professional. You can't. You can't say like, "Whoa, I hope I have enough fabric." You can't. You can't do that. You got to be professional. You might get forked in the head too. You can't. Uh, you can't say, "Listen, sir, would you, it's summer? Would you be interested in a lightweight boat cover?" Can't do that. I'd go to Nehru. Can't say, sir, were you born with three pussies on your head? You can't say those things. So you, you're going to have to just do your best to, to put it together. For big guys, you're, you're tall, but you're also, a, 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 you know, you're, you're muscular, right? So you, you, just, you just can't walk into a store and buy off the rack, right? You, no, no. So if you're getting a suit, let's say you're getting, you got to go to an affair, you, you, you got to get a suit, you have to have this thing made. All my clothes are. Uh, there's a uh, American Tall is a company that um, has actually came around that has um, some good. I mean, not great quality, but but good quality clothing. Uh, and they go like like my inseam. My, my biggest problem is my inseam. It's a uh, 38, and then my chest soft. Is like, yeah. My chest is fifty six, but my waist is you know forty. So the, you know, an athletic cut I think is eight inches, and mine's like six to sixteen inch drop. And then I got big on top of that. I got big ass fucking delts, and I, my arms are you know are over twenty inches around. My neck's over twenty inches around. So, so when they tend to make those larger sizes, they're not necessarily for athletic trim guys they usually they're like a tent right they're yeah, just and then, and then if, if, unless they have usually you can't even uh like the shirts like they can't dart them right they don't fucking they don't, they don't if you take your jacket off they they don't sit right it's it's so it's it's just it's you just gotta get shit made you know just gotta get it made but if you're not tall right if you're like i don't know is abby tall i never did no. you ever work with abdullah yeah, I'm not, no, not, not, but I mean, I've worked. You've been around ter- him. In, yeah, I've been in territories with him. So he's not tall. He's just, it's it's the girth and the breasts are unbelievable. So that's, that his shit has to be made for him. There, there's no way that American tall or or, any, or or American wide as a fucking Mack truck is going to fit on him. No, he, he He needs no. those made. But he, I, I, he. I think that was, he always tried to do that, like, Sultan look, you know, where he had, like, some kind of, uh, you know, like, almost like a Middle Eastern uh, 
And I don't. I, I, well, he was yeah. billed from the Sudan, but of course the, right. he was just a black dude, Larry Shreve. Um, but he. Um, a funny story about him in uh, Todd Gordon's book that I co-authored, coming soon. Um, he was working ECW, and he was getting. He was in the locker room, and they were. It was a TV taping, and one of the headhunters, you know, one of those massive. 400 pounders gets thrown through the wall in the ECW arena and goes through the uh, the drywall, knocks a hole, and the camera's shooting into what is now a hole in the wall. After all the dust settles, literally, Abby is sitting in the locker room trying to put a sock on, trying to fling a sock around his big toe, and he turns and looks, sees the hole gets up and just walks off camera <laughs> classic moment yeah, it had to be no it was just it had to be so miserable just getting around i you Yoko, you have a hard time flying right because you're very tall so you need your legs you need those either you're in first class or you have to be in in one of those like extra leg room type deals right if i if i in first class i'm not on the plane okay so i, I should have known of course, but you're the size. You, you you're six ten, so. But I'm also wider than a first class seat. Let alone a coach. The seat. shoulders too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm I'm fucking. If I'm sitting in, if I'm sitting in coach, then I got this much of my fucking bodies on that next. And then you go out this way, and they fucking they ram you with the with the cart. Yeah. Oh God, the fucking carts! Yeah, whenever I'm on the aisle, like I'm, I'm small and I get it with the cart. How the fuck would Abby sit? He has to buy two, right? You can't do one seat. No, Yoko, Yoko, they used to, because Rod, Rodney when he had so much ass that when he, like, when Yoko would sit in a town car and I'd be driving and Yoko would be in the passenger side, like he would literally be like this much taller than me because he was sitting on his ass, right? His, you know. And my ass is just, you know, just, right. I mean, it's fucking succulent, but I mean, it's not going to give me any fucking height. <laughs> I had a horn swoggle in my passenger seat one time, and he has one of those big fat midget asses. And, um, can you say that? I think he has to say little person, little, ass. a fat little person ass. Well, he, he's the one on air who said that I should call him midget. I asked him in the, in the opening of the show, I said, now, what am I calling you today? He said, midget, I'm a midget. So I have permission from him. Anybody All who's right. looking to write a letter to somebody, um, it'll be on. It'll be on the fucking comments. A very strange thing. He was my. He was. Do midgets eat Detroit pizza? Only the small animals. <laughs> <laughs> he was like my height. He was eye yeah, level with me crazy. when I turned to him, because of the the, the big fat assness, the the uh, the Kim Kardashian ass that he's got going. Um. So yeah, so Abby could certainly could not fly. Yoko, what what two seats, an entire row? How'd they fly him? They used to sit him coach because it was better for him to have two coach seats, right? Than it was for you know for him to because first he couldn't get his ass in the seat because that thing in the middle of two first class seats doesn't pick up. You know, the divider, the, 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 the armrest? Yeah, the, the plastic divider, cup holder, uh, whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah, that thing, that, that, that doesn't pick up. Good point. Right. So he, he was always better off in, in having two, you know, the aisle and the next seat. Because it wasn't like he was, you know, long-limbed. He just had that, you know, he had a big, big key star on the yeah. rod. Rod was... Uh, it's tough being and then next on top to of that, man. Like you know, I remember one time we were going overseas, and Rod had to take a dump. And ain't like Rod's getting in a fucking in a bathroom, so we had to just get up and put like whole trash bags because he couldn't shut the door and shit. Right, he can't fit so in there. The fucking the boys had to fucking do the buddy system. Oh, take me there. I I never heard this before. So yeah, I, I'm sure I'm sure Andre was the same way. There's just no fucking way that. Um, I think he just let it go in his pants. But so uh, where yeah, where does I, Rodney go to the back? That back in the day, they were there was always that second in first. Like there's that 
the divider and then there's that really that's the bathroom that if you travel is that square one mm -hmm. you know not that one that's up at the front that's got the, the the pitch of the plane you go in the middle where it's a square bathroom where you can you know that's that's your best bet um but this was, you know, we were we were on some sh some shit plane that didn't have that, so Rod had to, um, you know, I remember one time I like like we I, we were on some like Piedmont or some fucking thing back in the day, and uh, I got up and we were we were drinking. I was sitting by t uh, across from Taker in the aisle, and I, I you know I fucking wedged my way in there, and Taker says. Fuck, man. He said, how, how, how did you fucking, like, how did you not piss all over yourself? I said, I used the urinal. He goes, what? I said, well, you probably call it a sink. <laughs> He's like, you motherfucker. I said, I can't get in. I can only get in so fucking far. So before you ever piss in a sink, for you rookies out there, you got to run the water to make sure the drain doesn't fucking, doesn't, you know, it, it works. Right. Because one time I go in there, man, I've been pounding beers on the whole flight. I go in there and fill this fucking basin full of piss, and it ain't draining. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. Now what? They... So I, I, I'm like, do I ask for a coffee cup and I fucking siphon you know... it out into the toilet? Uh, yeah, like, like, oh. like, you're freaking, like bailing a ship. And then fucking, so then I just like, so I, I kept fucking with it, kept fucking with it. Finally, I got it to start to drain. But there was probably still an inch and a half of piss, and I just started taking those fucking white uh, paper towels and just fucking saturating the piss. Oh, and, and then, and then, and not on top of all this, now you you've got me. I'm, I'm I'm OCD, so this motherfucking bathroom when I leave is cleaner than it was when the fucking cleaning crew got in there. I mean, I put fucking soap. Every, I mean, I clean this whole fucking thing, because I'll be damned if fucking somebody's going to follow me and go, oh, that fucking pig. So, but that was a, a, a yeah, because I can't, I can't get in, and I'm not going to, if I, if I was to piss, now you got, like, there's, you've always got the chance of fucking getting the, the piss, the piss boner on the plane. And you know, if you piss with that son of a bitch, just gets going 11 directions. Right. You know, you, you can't turn around and sit and piss because your shit's, you can't bend it down to get your cock in the fucking, you know, in the toilet. So you're better off just fucking pull, pulling it out, putting it in the fucking, laying that bitch in the fucking sink and then fucking pissing. Piss right. Are there certain you know, airlines? I, I'm 63 years old. I got fucking a, probably about five and a half million miles in the air. Like, I, I have found this to be effective, ladies and gentlemen. So do, do not ask me. Ah, oh, I, I, you're not supposed to do that from Detroit. We had square pizza. Square oh, pizza in the bathroom. Yeah. Yourself. No, this, I'm not this pissing is... all over. But it's like it's like when you walk in. This is another one of my favorites. When did we become such a bunch of fucking just pussies that we can't fucking piss next to another dude? If there's not a fucking stall, like a wall. Oh, like a partition? You, like, yeah, because everybody knows when I get off a plane, the first thing I want to do, man, is I want to fucking, I want to do some fucking meat gazing. Meat gazing, I yeah. want to fucking see some hog. What, what the fuck? This, I know this guy, I've been, I've been over his shoulder getting his company's secrets while he worked on his fucking computer. But what I really want to know is what's he fucking packing? So you go into fucking the Delta Sky Lounge, and these motherfuckers go in, and and that's and like that's the Taj Mahal. That's they actually have the, the the wood goes all the way to the tile. There's no looking underneath. I mean, if you got, I, you can rub one out, and that son of a bitch, no fucking prop. You always, it's like fucking right now. The Delta codes. Cheers. Punch that in. Go to Pornhub. Wham. Dunk one. Dunk one down the fucking drain. Check your emails. So I, can, I don't get what it, nobody's going to knock on that. There's like nine of them. But there's always a guy that fucking, every time I, I'm in line waiting, the door opens up and there's a puddle of piss 
And on the, the guy, floor. <laughs> yeah, and the guy is pissed all over the seat because this small cock motherfucker won't go piss in the stall that's got a wall next to it. He's got to go inside and fucking spray down the whole fucking shitter. There are those guys that will always use the commode as opposed to going to the urinal. Which I will, a, I, which I'll, I, I, but see, this is the difference. It, it's really just common fucking, it's, it's common courtesy. If there's, if there's every, if all the fucking uh, urinals are taken and the handicap bathroom usually doesn't take, usually people will, will, you know, the handicap will be the last stall to be taken. But so you, you put your, your briefcase on the hook and you leave the door of that uh, handicap open. You take your foot, you pick up the lid, you piss, you flush it, and you'll fucking walk out. Mm -hmm. You don't shut the door because you want somebody to know, hey, I'm pissing because there was the st- I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and get a bladder infection while you fucks that all got prostate problems trying to squeeze a fucking other drop out of your dick. Mm. Th- this again, folks, this is millions of miles tested. This is, uh, this is advice. Uh, this was the Delta Sky Lounge where you can rub one out to Pornhub or your favorite website in the uh, privacy of a stall that goes to the floor. And that's the uh, that's the key. These these are key takeaways here. I got to get back to fucking Yoko taking a shit in a garbage bag. That you now do the no, jobbers they, we, have no, to they, hold? No, they we 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 use the garbage bag. We tear it and cut like so. It's it's partitioned for privacy. Oh, you it's made sh- a part. I, I, yeah. I'm thinking you, he's oh. shitting in a bag because he can't fit in the bathroom. You talk about the no. plane ride from hell. I'll tell you one thing. It makes we Waltman's I, eyebrows look like a I, like a party. I, 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 I'll have to fucking get b- verification on this. I want to think it was the old Capitol Center. Landover, Maryland. And they had the, um, the, the shitters were, um, and somebody always says this, it seems like Nash always has indigestion on this show. Yeah, because I, 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 Did I someone I, say that? Yeah, I, I, it's like I come down here at six o'clock, like I, I've been drinking protein drinks. I I I I rushed from the gym to come here because it fucks my whole day up, and I haven't had solid food besides my my oatmeal and bananas at fucking eleven o'clock. So it's like I've had liquid food all day. My it's like so go fuck yourself. I don't have some. It, it, it's another guy says to me goes. Um, I was I was reading. The guy says. Your face looks a little bloated. Have you been checked for congestive heart failure lately? I'm like, no, I think I did two shows in, in back to back, and I had diarrhea in the first one, and we just didn't bring it up in the second one. But guess what? I was sick for both of them. And when you're dehydrated, guess usually what your body does. Wow, maybe it holds fucking it water retains because water. you're fucking pissing out your ass. Kevin, don't feel you've got to justify your bloatedness to any listener. You do not. Go back. No, to I, I just saw. I'm just saying, like, well, who would fucking spend the time to type that? So you'd build a partition so that Yoko. So we build a partition so Yoko. Can... So we're at the we're at the Capitol Center yeah. and the the toilets aren't uh, mounted to the floor. Mm-hmm. They come straight out from the wall. The wall. Oh, boy. Yoko sits on one, and the fucking thing explodes. It's the end of that. It yep. cuts his fucking ass. That was fucking, man. That was brutal. I felt so bad for him, man. I was just like, he's such a sweet, such a sweet, loving, great guy. And just like, man, just, it, it, it was like, nobody said anything. Because, I mean, he was, he, was, he, was, he was everybody's boy. But it was just like, fuck, man. Like God, life's got to be so fucking hard. When yeah. I first when I first met him, he was Kokina Maxima. And he was working for New Japan, and his finish was fucking uh, super kick. He was like four fifty. Could fucking, I mean, Roddy could super kick like it was nobody's business. Mm. No motherfucker, man. He was he was God. He was so talented. Abby worked the, Japan all the time too. What? Why they like those big monsters like that? Is it? I are, think because, well, such an attraction. Abby was so fucking violent. 
You know, right. Abby was just, I mean, and they, 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 those organizations, especially those like war and some of those other ones that they, they, that used to be prominent, but you know, they like the, the fucking, the blood. Yeah. They, they'd be, they'd be, uh, totally plus, extreme with plus, the you know, exploding back, when, death when i went over there matches. yeah when i went over there for the first time oh it was just like, crazy shit yeah those the fucking the 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 guy jinx would fucking go in the crowd like stan hansen would fucking oh. hit hit the marks with the fucking bell and he didn't i mean they bust fuckers open they didn't give a fuck you could get away with anything over there almost. yeah it was yeah. fucking it was, it was like live man what did you think of work in japan I like loved it. it. Yeah, I think you told me that once before. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody. I, I think it, it, it's kind of chill because you're out. Except you know, they, they, you know, I mean, to, nowadays it's probably really cool because you know they'd had the buses would be much more advanced and you know, you'd have more than one fucking uh, one movie on the fucking uh, on the bus that was in English. <laughs> You did you did bus tours over there, right? So you'd have yeah. to, uh, yeah. Would they load baby faces and heels on the same buses? Mostly, it was like the the New Japan crew, and then like the guy the the guy Jing the guy Jing you guys, yeah. And they had one seat in the back was like this big giant seat that kind of was like the, the throne for like the top guy Jing. Uh, uh, like like my first trip, Vader was sitting in that seat. Mm. Yeah, he was another one made a fortune over there too. Yeah, was the pay is the pay good for everybody that goes over there? All the gaijin, all the Americans. Usually, I mean, do, usually do you do is, well? It, usually, is better than you know. I think one of the things was too though that that was guaranteed. Like, that was like one of the few places that you know, if you're getting twenty grand a a, a week, which was good money over there. If you're getting twenty grand a week, it was like at least you knew you were getting twenty. You were going to come home with sixty thousand bucks. Right, they would make the deal in advance. It wasn't based on the gate. You you were given a guarantee, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and every time I went over there, you know, WCW would 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 still send you your check. I, mean, I I I you know, New Japan always took care of me. They always gave me extra cash. Did so, you get per diems too, like to uh, eat I don't and shit? No, I don't, I don't think so. Did you have to work a different style when you went over there? Did you? Did you change up what only you did? The Ste- only because the Steiners fucking like found wound me up so fucking. You know, man, if you guys, it's like we're going into prison. You know, you, you let these fucking guys punk you. Guy fucking half ass stiff shit on 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 you know on mistake, and you fucking light the Take guy up with off. fucking yeah, four, <laughs> four four forearms in a row. Like what the fuck's with this guy, Jing? What the fuck, dude? Uh, <laughs> But, but was it was that common where they would test you, where they would take no, advantage of you? Or this was no. just the Jap, the myth of Japan. I, I I always I always found that working in Japan, like you know, like it, it, it like working in Japan was like being in the military. It was so fucking simple. Just be polite, be respectful, and respect that you're in somebody else's country. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like like in, in the army. Just make sure your boots are fucking highly shined, your shits like, squared away, and like just it's so simple. Life's mm. so simple. Everybody everybody makes it so hard. You know, it's just like nah, just like you know, it's... like doing a, like doing a podcast and then doing a podcast really fucking stoned. <laughs> Well, don't like tonight, do that. We tonight, to... tonight, tonight's, tonight's like last week. I, I thought like, wow, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and, you know, fire one up. But way, way too close to showtime. This is this is like night and day. I'm, I have a dance partner tonight. You know, we're t- we're talking about Abby and the the Taylor, but the outfits that some of these big guys had to wear in the ring. Oh, you and I have always been a, a, a huge. <laughs> Huge fan of Mabel's outfit. I knew it was when it, cool. the, 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 the purple and gold. <laughs> then he came back his viscera, and he was like in a like a almost like a fucking black like latex body. Like that was crazy with different color eyes and yeah, but that big purple 
fucking like the <laughs> queen mum. Nelson, it, Nelson was kind of Abby ish, you know, with those big, those kind of lat breast. <laughs> the lat you know, breast, yeah. The lat breast. Yeah. They, where do you stand on fake tits, by the way? Are, are they as acceptable as natural or, or, or uh, well, I definitely think I, I, I don't like. I don't mean on a man either, by the way. No, I, I, I no. didn't think you did. Okay. Even though you're from New Jersey. Exactly. Um, I don't want to uh, I have take receipt, off. A, I have receipts <laughs> coming for the for the diva thing. I know I have receipts yeah, coming. Yeah, Go ahead. So. But I, I mean, I don't have. Uh, I don't want to uh, uh, take a, a woman's blouse off or, you know, take her dress down and she's got a fucking uh, bar of soap and a tube sock for a breast. I don't think that's kind of a look I'm going for. Um, I just that I, I just think that that a, a, a natural a, a, like a natural breast, anything that's like if it's bigger than a champagne cup, it's probably going to be like she's going to lay on her back, and it's, they're probably going to go under in her armpits. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of a you know. I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely for uh, breast augmentation, especially to balance somebody. Um, uh, if it's needed. And, and I, I don't think, I don't think and, and like when women have, uh, usually when they have a uh, curious child, their breasts get all fucked up from the glands and getting sucked on and everything else and you know, having some creepy husband trying to get fucking some colostrum. But, um, uh, it's a fetish for I, everything, man. Yeah, you know. But um, I always like this one. Like when when, when a guy says, "Oh, jeez, man, do you think she could have get went any bigger?" I'm thinking, yeah, because if we could get our cocks fucking enlarged, I'm sure we'd all go in and go, eh, "Just give me like a sixteenth of an inch, doc." Yeah. Every guy fucking walking around fucking town to be tying their shit in a knot. <laughs> hey, watch this. Just got my just got my new dick. Let me tell you the knot. Look, huh? Do the Robert Fuller. Put a wrist lock on the motherfucker. Right, right. You know, if you were the wheel man for Abdullah the Butcher, I'd imagine some additional wear and tear might find your car, you know? If you didn't have a low rider before you started heading to the town, well, you do now. Well fuck he 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 probably blade the seats, if nothing else. Right. You know what though? You can you can invest in some extra peace of mind with Car Shield. Car oh. Shield makes it easy and affordable to protect my car from expensive repairs, and that is just for starters. Car Shield is the number one auto protection company in the U.S., and it offers protection plans for about a hundred bucks a month. The plans cover more parts than ever before. Whether your car has five thousand miles or one hundred fifty thousand miles, let me tell you how simple this is to get your car fixed. When you need a repair, you go choose the mechanic. And then Car Shield's administrators handle the rest. That's it. You don't even have to deal with the paperwork or headaches you're taken care of. You don't have to explain the reason that your car is scraping the bottom of the road as you drive to the next town with Abby. Same goes for uh, if your car breaks down. If you're stuck on the side of the road, plans through Car Shield also include coast to coast roadside assistance. Car Shield's administrators are there for you with rental car options and trip reimbursement at no extra cost. Get coverage today. You'll lock in your price now, and it'll never go up. That means as long as you own your car, no matter how old it is, you're protected from the rising cost of parts and repairs for your vehicle. CarShield helps protect my wallet from expensive car repairs, and they're going to do the same for you. Go to carshield.com slash podcast to start your plan and lock in your price forever. That's carshield.com slash podcast. A deductible may apply. Were you a um? What kind of wheel man were you? Did you ever drive, or um? I, was, oh, I drove every mile. You did. That was yeah. If you would have been listening earlier when I did, when you were too busy calling me a diva, right? I, I I tried to explain to you that one of the reasons that I didn't particularly like the uh, round robin being passed around. Uh, from car to car, I should say from shit box to shit box, was the fact that the people that were behind the wheel should not have had their license. Oh no, I heard and that, I, but I meant I, when you were when you were no, on the road. I, yeah, well, that's on the road. 
And that's like my entire career, I drove. My first road trip, I drove. I always drove. Oh, I thought Triple H, but wasn't Triple H uh, doing the rides? Uh... Yeah, that was it was four years into the... Oh, all right. Okay. He came in in January. I mean, you know, yeah, at that point, you know, once I, once I realized after like two weeks, I realized when he said, I don't do anything, and I realized he was being serious, I was just like, wow. Like, this would be nice to take, you know, not be behind the wheel. You know, you've, you've got to realize back then, we 90% of our, our, our road trips were northeast. So that's that bumper to bumper. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 being that wheel guy every day, day in, day out, snow, rain. Like, oh, why did you I want mean, that? Oh. Because that's what you did. Because we didn't get tired back then. <laughs> Well, you were 42. 42. You weren't 42 yeah. yet. I was, see, yeah, I was 36. <laughs> Jesus. I, I swear to God, man. Were you ever, uh, did you get, when you worked Japan, you know you hear about the young boys, right? And uh, did you did you ever have uh, any, any of the young workers over there uh, carrying your bags or yeah. looking after you or anything like that? I would never do anything. I would never. Dallas Page would be, D- Dallas is always great. You'd be, uh, go, you know, because you got to go, like, for, for like, Dallas would have like 73 bags for, <laughs> for, 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 for a two day trip. And some Mark would come up in the parking lot and say, Hey, man, can I get your autographs? And Dallas would be like, Yeah, you can have mine if you carry my bags in the hotel. And he wouldn't shit, man. I mean, he'd give. I mean, he'd give you every bag he had. <laughs> wouldn't like he'd help out and drag one. Fuck that. You were you were taking Billy Zane's Titanic bag collection up to the fucking hotel, because that was the one thing was you know when you come in late, you've got to. I mean, it's it's important that you got to get your car in a parking spot, because if you park it someplace, there's a chance it'll get fucking towed. If it's in front of the, you know, a dumpster or some shit like that. So before you, like, it, it's better to drag you. If you see a spot, take it. Mm. Because if not, you could end up missing that spot. The next car boys gets it and you're, you know, parked a, a, around the corner up, you know, in the hood or some shit, you know. Mm. It wasn't like we were staying in the world's finest hotels. So, yeah. But I, so I mean, that's, I think that's what. I think that's why I was so tired all the time. <laughs> did guys like Abby and and Viscera did, did they get rats? What does an Abby rat look like? I need to see an Abby rat. Did that really? <laughs> Do you really? I, I I see, and and I'd want to see the action just just to know how this is even possible. Mm. I think, you know, when like, when I think of rats, and I mean, they were, when I broke in, the, 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 you can always tell how the business is doing by the rats. Right. Man, when that NWO shit was hot, it, it looked like you go in there, it looked like a fucking Ford modeling convention at the fucking bar. Right. You know, it was, ugh. Yeah, there was some, there was there was always some there was, there was some some attractive, and, and there was still, like you go to shows and there'd be you know, a list uh, celebrities like Dennis Miller would be back, and and when we went to the forum, Dennis Miller would be back there and uh, different people. Right, uh, John, John Candy was always would always be. Uh, remember one time we another one with nice tits. Yeah, Candy has some nice tits. I think that's a that's a that's a go to uh, go home shot, Uncle Buck. With that, so go ahead. But I, were... th- I think his were implants, though. I, I... Oh right. Yeah, he would have had the two socks with golf balls in them if he didn't yeah. uh, mm. pump those bad boys up. But I just always wonder, like, of course, like I know fucking Shawn Michaels and all these guys. No. That, that, what? Sean was never, Sean was not a rat guy. Oh, no, 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 not him. I meant that girls would be, would come out to meet them and to try, oh. 
you'd have yeah. girls like going after like the rockers and rock and roll express i mean and, yeah, and stuff always, like that I, I always think that like the reason we used to go to strip clubs was a there was beautiful women there that you weren't picking up and b when a mark came over you could say to him hey dude you're in a room full of fucking beautiful naked women and you want to talk to us <laughs> Like, or are you just here for the nine dollar beers? Like, go shoot, 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 and like, nobody would ever look at you and go. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, that probably comes across really freaky, doesn't it?" Like, yeah, dude. Like, we're all supposed to be. Come on, we're dudes. That's brilliant. Yeah, it was, it was a built-in force field. Yeah, and I remember. I remember one time, uh, me and Tigger got called into the to the office. Principal McMahon told me and take her that uh, he didn't want to see us in, or hear of us being in any strip clubs. Really? Yeah, he said it wasn't wasn't a good image for for, for Mark and I because we we're both baby faces at the time. Was this as he was writing out a twelve million dollar check, or oh, that was it was, uh, was probably uh, before? I, no, this is I, I, yeah. yeah, this is I, I don't know, and I. Bad look none for you guys of, to be in a strip of, club from Vince McMahon. None of my, none of my business. Right, I I didn't write one. So the the we go in. I, I want to think the next town that we go to is like Winnipeg, and there's a, a a hotel that we used to stay at that had a strip joint hooked to it. Wow, that's convenient. Yeah, so <laughs> I say fuck this, man. I'm gonna go down a strip joint. So I go downstairs, go to the strip joint. And I'm looking at all you get. Strip joints are always that, like, you know, just a, 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 like vampire dark where you're, even if you come out of like a, a, out of the dark, you've still got to adjust to the strip club lighting, you know? Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I sit against the wall and I'm sitting there looking around, looking around, and all of a sudden I just look straight, straight across from me. In the room, I see this long fucking hair. I see a bandana. I look over and I fucking just see Taker. Like, like we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna sit with each other. We're just like, oh, so you didn't listen either, <laughs> right? Just acknowledge that you're yeah, both on the same page. Like, still. Take, take, yeah, like fuck that, right, man? Like, yeah, like who? Yeah, come on, that was like when when, when they told uh, Sean. That uh, Scott could ride with us because they were working the matches together, and Sean just—I mean, from zero to a hundred—went to motherfucker. You got me on the road three hundred days a year. And you're gonna tell me who I can spend my time with? I'm gonna travel with hello, I want to travel. Blah, 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 blah. And Vince just kind of went like, "Whoa!" I didn't realize it was that. Like, okay. If it's that much of a deal to you three, geez, do what you want to do. So Vince relented on that, even though they were working a program together and let them ride together? The, the match was so good. Like, what are they going to do, you know? Yeah, because they, they, don't you think that there should be some mystique left? I know they were your friends, but don't you think there's some validity in saying, guys, for the next couple of months, can you just no, hang out in the we, hotel we, room? I mean, it was the master plan was to blow it all up with the curtain call anyway, so. Because <laughs> that's all we, you know, it was in the works knew, for months. I, I knew the shit was a work when I was ten. Not that anyone doesn't know it's a work, exactly. but you've got to, but you've got to go through some of the motions. No, uh, but no, all right. I think you. I think you guys. Yeah, don't have a boom mic in, the, in when you're doing the shot. So you, I say, oh, boom, my fuck, I'm watching a movie. Right. Oh, he hit him 45 times in the face. There's no blood. Mm. That, that's, that, that's what you're selling. You're selling the disbelief that these two guys are going out there and trying to beat each other's ass. You can tell when you have the people. When you have a hot angle and you have the people and your work's stiff, you can say what the fuck you want to about Bill Goldberg. But when he was on his streak, and he went out there and he he was intense, those people sat on like they sat up. Mm. 
because they knew, and they knew because they'd already been programmed. This ain't gonna go long. It was like Tyson. It's like that yeah. white. It's like that when, when Tyson got out of jail, that white boy he fought, Peter what McNeely. The, what yeah. the fuck? Is, yeah, I, I just watched that the other night. I'm thinking like. You talking about fucking lamb to slaughter, man? Like, wow. No, but I mean, it's just I think that's the whole thing. Like you want that that you want to disbelieve. Like when when Edge got after Dominique last night, his first two or three blows, like it sucked me in. Like, no, I get know? that, but but is it okay then for the fan that watched the match to see them leave in the car together? Well, it wasn't like we, it, you didn't have access to us. If we, if we'd left together, like the guy would lay in the back seat, we'd pop up out of the building through a tunnel and, and, and be on the road. It wasn't like we were stopping and fucking glad handing. So I mean, you did, we, okay. So you yeah, did, you we, did we, manage we, to hide we, it. Yeah. We, pre- we preserved it, but at the same, I mean, I've seen guys before where the fucking heels drive off and. You know, the, number one, like we had no cell phones, so if you had cell phones, you could say, "Hey, let's, you know, let's go up the up the road eight miles." And I'm, I'm looking right now. There's a, a Shell station. We'll get I'll get a beer there, and we'll switch we'll switch uh, cars with with guys. Right. You know, you could we we, we couldn't do that. Right. So plus, everybody fucking hated us. And we wanted to drive this anyway, so what the fuck's the matter? Oh, you mean the other workers? Yeah, I fucking hated the click. That's the last thing you want to do is fucking drive with us. Yeah, let's let some of these fucking pricks sit in a fucking car with us. Why I understand right or wrong, why Vince said that, but why did Vince not want you in a strip club? That's that's when we were no longer um in competition with Ted Turner's wrestling, we were in competition with Disney. So to sanitize the image, you mean? I don't fucking know. It's just another weird request for an athlete. Don't go to a. I can't see the New York Giants or. Yeah, you can't Phil, smoke, Phoenix can't, Suns. Can't smoke pot. Can't do this. Can't do that. And you can't look at pussy. Enjoy yeah, your life. Weird. Well, one was oh, illegal. And, and and that while, was... while you're at it, while you're at it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay you fucking shit. As uh, you had your ten night guarantee, with yeah, fifteen hundred dollars was a long way. And yeah, and they, buy, some, buy, they had some cold I, cuts. I'll that, buy you. I'll buy you fucking four square pizzas. Back Interesting in, though. Back in pers- forty nine. <laughs> With Interesting fucking... perspective you have because you were there in the lean years and then when things got crazy. So you did your uh, TV tapings with cold cuts and, and bread. And, and I, well, not only did, did, did we, um, did I, did I, I, I worked during the fucking lean years. I was a, a pretty intricate part of making sure those, that everybody got paid and there were good years. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, Scott and I left to get guaranteed money. Yeah. Was, cha- was, was a game changer. So, well, that's what I said. You bridged that gap. You were, you were yeah. there for the lean years and then you moved. Well, I didn't bridge it, man. I built it. There you go. There's a shirt. Built the city. Merch. <laughs> built the city on fucking rock and roll. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'll tell you what, what have happened? What would have happened? 1996, mm. Scott Hall asked, Hey, would you like to fucking make a move? Maybe bring your partner over, do this NWO thing. Scott looks at him, fucking tired. Just fucking tired. If 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 Punk came on the air right now, if Phil was sitting right here, I can say Phil because I know he hates it. Um, what what would you say to him about what went on in AEW? Well, see, my whole thing is like I I look at it from a perspective because I watched Phil come back, I watched 
I've watched like everything he did. And he made sure that he made everybody before he beat them. Like okay. he, he was a he was a pro. Mm -hmm. He could have went out there, man, because he was he was, you know, he was his cut his his run got cut, you know, basically politically. He just had too much fucking heat. I deserve it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's like I said, there's a lot of fucking I see a lot of me in him. I don't I'm not, I'm not gonna speak for him, but I, he's a little bit of a prick. And um <laughs> so and it wasn't like he I, I guarantee you if like when he, when he had his run, he knew who was selling. I mean like he, he had the, 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 the number that day of how many shirts he sold, I'm sure. So he could throw that in somebody's face if he had to. But uh no, he did a good job and then he got, you know. He, he he got hurt and then he he came back and you know I I don't know the specifics I know that the hangman thing the hangman uh, interview upset him um, I, I think what happens when you start doing that work shoot shit mm -hmm. like because you it, it's not scripted so you do get a sunny days. That can right. wreck somebody's fucking life at home. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's shit that makes you like now you've you've taken that step over the line where you've now put my, my relationship and my family into your fucking bullshit on television, and now I want to, I want to beat your ass. Referencing, of course, when Shawn Michaels Shawn alluded to Bret Hart uh, having some. Spending time with Sonny, which apparently and wasn't the, true. And the thing was, she told me it wasn't. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Brett. Brett had Brett had a family and 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 children and a wife and I guess you know, to have a family you'd have probably have children. Uh, and um, you know, Sean was a, a single guy saying like he didn't have anything to lose. Right. So, and that's the thing with Phil is you know Phil's got AJ. So she broke in. I mean, she's been through the business. So it's not like he doesn't have a smart, smart wife. Like she knows what the you know she knows what the deal is. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, maybe we'll get him on. We'll reach out and see what happens. Listen, our next partner I'm going to tell you about is a product I use every morning. I recently started taking AG1, Kevin, by Athletic Greens. I know you have some um, in your humble abode. I had um I actually I had a gut related health issue this year. I uh, had an emergency room visit, and I had to scale back on things like red meat, fried foods, and as you know, we sat at a fucking, what was a Longhorn, and I had to have five shrimp on a skewer while you devoured this succulent ribeye next to me. No, I, I, didn't, I don't eat ribeyes. So what did you have? Filet. I don't eat the... That was a filet, because it's lean. Rib. It's lean, yeah. right. So, you know, I wanted to add to my diet after that. I have four bottles of vitamins and supplements in my medicine cabinet. It's an ordeal. But you know what? AG1 came into my life and showed me how easy it is to support immunity and give me what I was looking for in all those little bottles I had in my medicine cabinet. The taste is a home run, too. It's a mild, tropical-esque taste. I do look forward to it uh, when I get up in the morning. It's the first thing I do is drink it on an empty stomach. You take one scoop of the AG1, Okay into uh, 8 to 12 ounces of water, and you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This blend of ingredients supports your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, uh, focus, and aging. And if you're like me, gut health. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. It took me an emergency room visit to change my diet and find AG1, but it doesn't have to be as dramatic for you. Kevin has a special offer for you to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs of AG1 for your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash click. 
K-L-I-Q. Again, that's athleticgreens.com <laughs> slash click to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. This is, I, I did some research on it. And um, this is basically formulated and, and uh, designed by athletes. Like this is this this is a, a the, the the blends and the, and the things that are in it are are, are very. Um, I always think like it to me like the ultimate uh, athlete is a triathlete, mm. and one of the one of the people that was was behind this was a triathlete, and I actually um. I get up in the morning. And I, I I drink this metabolic tea, so I decided to take. To, to take it this morning mm-hmm. and put it in my my I have a cup and put put it and I, I I microwave it for two minutes and so it was so it kind of had my um, instead of my tea I drank it I drank it instead of my tea today good idea and um, it was because I don't uh, it was nice I mean yeah. it was it, it, it it'll probably take me a little while to get used to it. Because it's a, it's a little stronger than the tea that I drank, but I'm getting way. I mean, we you know we talked about that, that the the pro, probiotic, mm-hmm. probiotic, uh, the probiotic that's um that I take, and this has, this has got a lot. Like I I forget what the number was. I want to think, maybe seven billion. Like you know, right. Like this is, so you're getting your, you're getting your, your, your good, uh, well, the, 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 the proof will be in the pudding. So next week I'll give you, uh, my, uh, my, my dump update. So by, yeah. by the time I get, I get it out of here tonight, I'll be, uh, be less here. bloated. Yeah. Right? No congestive yeah. heart failure to worry about. Yeah. Well, your uh, your public awaits, Kevin. As always, ask Nash. You can do this yourself. Hashtag ask Nash, and uh, maybe you will show up on a future edition of the show, like David McKeever did when he says, "Hey, big sexy, my wife's mother claims you guys had a fling in high school one night at a party. She was a little too intoxicated. You picked her up over your shoulder. She got scared and gave you a big bite on the back." Do you recall this? What's her name? Well, his name is David McKeever, so it doesn't mean that's her maiden name, but he did not leave a name. Were you bit on the back by a drunk chick at a party in high school? This would be his wife. Oh, this is his wife's mother, so it wouldn't be McKeever anyway. So, Not to sound like a complete tool, but... Uh... I put Will Chamberlain to shame by my sophomore year in high school. Right, so it's, it's happened many. You've been bitten on the back many. Well, he didn't say you plowed her. <laughs> Wilt was uh, Wilt was about ten thousand. I think was the number twenty twenty thousand twenty. He didn't say you drilled her. Uh, this was just a, a bite. But no, he said you had a fling. So I guess a fling would indicate a uh, a relationship of some kind, short lived perhaps. Yeah, that's yeah. a good. I got you know. I was at the. Uh, at the, uh, what's the fuck name of that place? The Gold Club in Atlanta. And mm-hmm. um, so, and I was separated from my wife at the time, and, 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 and there was allegations that I had been blown in the VIPs, in the VIP room. So the FBI brings me in, and they want to see whether I'm going to be a, uh, a hostile or a... a a, a workable witness. And the guy says to me, he goes, uh, Mr. Nash, uh, were you uh, ever uh, given uh He says, now we know that you'd never paid for anything. You and Jerry Stackhouse are the only two that didn't pay for sex. But we want to know, did you... And I said to the guy, I said, dude, I'm Kevin Nash. I get blown at the Waffle House. You think I'm supposed to fucking keep track of fucking all the times fucking I get blown? The guy said, you can leave. That's great. So you were really brought in during an investigation that they were running a prostitution ring out of there? Yeah. Wow. 
That brings us to AJ's question, by the way. I work at a gentleman's club in Virginia, and I'm having problems with the girls and bartenders tipping me out. Any suggestions? Do your fucking job. Obviously, if I, obviously, obviously, you're not. If 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 you, it, it, it says nowhere in your uh, job description that you should be bussing tables. But if you bust tables and pick up the beer bottles and take them back and put like, if you help everybody, it's, it's like your job is is to make sure that that everybody's job run right, make make sure them, a the girls are protected if the girls if, if the girls don't feel safe that's why you're not getting tipped out so he there's something he's not doing he's not something doing enough to earn doing. the tip okay and 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 if it's if it's just the fact that the it, it may be just a shit club and, the, and there's no fucking money to be made it could be too. You know, to go to the manager and see if you can get get the uh, minimum of the, of the of the uh, the tip scale. I mean, we're we're at eight point eight point three uh, inflation. So I mean, you know, you got you, you got. Th- this is the thing that I always like, though. It said last night I was watching uh, a Republican television uh, broadcast, and they said that the actual. Uh, the 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 salary has went up five point four percent or something like that five point six percent, and inflation was up eight point three. So if the if your salary is up five point four percent and you're down eight point three, aren't we at I think it isn't that like a three per, like three percent difference? And isn't like two point two like basic where where inflation is? I know that like in Florida you, you can. Uh, when you homestead uh, a property, it can't go up more than three percent a year. Correct. Yeah. And we're at we're at that right now. So I'm thinking to myself, like, is this just another one of these fucking working gimmicks that we just throw out there? Because it it's like, well, of course. I mean, listen, the the news has to the news has to position that it's a business. Like, news is entertainment. Yeah, I know. Okay, we're at a point I, where I, news I, is entertainment. So, but. With what happens is when you have a bunch of fucking people that, are, that that don't understand how things work, like there's no soft landing in a recession. Like we're gonna raise it another, uh, you know, three quarters of a, of a percent. Prime, but uh, the I, Fed. You talking about yeah, the Fed yeah, raising? Yeah, the Fed, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna raise another three, uh, uh, you know, point seven five here, but uh, you know. Looking for maybe a soft landing into this recession. Hmm. Remember what rates were in 1980, by the way? Good. Just yes. Dominic looked that up for me. Here's one Tell for you. Your interest rates were in 1981 see, see what, if you were see, buying a house. See what they were when, when, when um, Nixon did that phase one, phase two, phase three, when inflation was like, oh, my God, it was like, when did when did Nixon get impeached? Seventy one. Uh, seventy one. Hey, my my sons correct me. Said it, 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 he resigned. Nixon resigned. He, he was impeached, but resigned. He wasn't removed from office. He did resign. Okay, so Dominic. Interest rate was 16.68 in 1981. In 80? Here it is right here. There you go. So we're quibbling right now over 3 fucking point seven two on Prime or wherever we're at. Or it started at 3.72. What are we at now? So um, I do know that uh, from mortgage research that fucking... Six, yeah, sixteen point six eight percent in eighty one. So, I mean, what, what are we talking about here, guys? Historically, well, you know, this Biden guy. You know, <laughs> my favorite is in Florida when they would do this shit on the pumps. You ever see it on the gas pumps when they would put the sticker mm-hmm. of Biden pointing, and it would say like, "I did this." Mm-hmm. We're in a war with Russia's in a war with the Ukraine. Okay, we're cutting off all Russian oil, 
and uh, which is the num- which is the number one the number one producer, producer in the world. Yeah, we're cutting that out of we're cutting that out of the out of the out of the chain, and um, oh my God, I can't believe the petroleum is going up. Ridiculous. They point, that, pi- they point to the that, pipeline. Yeah, for is this is e- e- econ. Oh yeah, let's 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 frack and drill and do shit in in in, in the middle of our national monuments. Hey. Cash Money says, I love this podcast. I signed up for Twitter specifically to ask you this question. If you were in a bar or street fight and you were outnumbered and needed help and could only have one member of the clique to help you, who would it be? Scott. Scott, right? Yeah, Scott's a mean fucker. Ryan from the gym. So with Big Kev being from Michigan, who did Kevin Nash root for in college football back in the day? Wolverines, Buckeyes, Spartans? How'd you end up Spartans. with number How'd you end up with number 43 for basketball? Um when uh back in the day when you played basketball, the the the, the numbers, the jerseys went up uh by like, you know, like the guards were like 10, 5, 10, 12, because they were the smaller jerseys. And then the bigger bigger guys were, you know, so 43 was, you could either be 43, 40, uh, 45, or 53. I mean, I mean, we might have had 55, but I don't think we had a 55. And I thought, okay. yeah, I thought four, four, 43, you, you add that together, it's seven. And I, I, I love playing craps. Even when I was like just a kid, I like, I like throwing <laughs> dice. So I always thought seven was like anything that added to seven was was lucky. Miguel Garcia with superhero movies being the trend now. What superhero would Kevin like to play in a movie, Marvel or DC? Probably Catwoman. I'd be like a <laughs> sultry Catwoman, and but but like be stationed like in Buffalo. And my calling card would be like I'd like I would like throw like a I, like a catch like a it was a it'd be a dildo but the head of it would be a, have a cat's face on it. Oh right, like almost like a like a grappling hook you could yeah. like, stick to somebody. Yeah, yeah, and do that, and then maybe like sneak at a home game late at night at the Bills, and <laughs> maybe throw one of those into the end zone. Oh, listen, with all this dildo talk, we covered Abby's tits, dildos, and you know what? We didn't get to the bunkhouse stampede yet, but we at least we got some more facts on it that they started uh, an hour and a half early. I think what's, what, what's really going to have to happen here, because I didn't realize how easy it was to get a hold of the people at the National Archives. All right. Well, they're a little had, busy right now. but Well, they, they, they say that. But I went ahead and made some inquiries, and okay. um, so they said, "Please put it in writing." So I went ahead and had my esquire uh, go ahead and put it in writing of the of because I want some specifics. I want some box, you know. I want some gate totals, concessions. I want to see if we can find out if there's any way we can find out what the what the guys got paid, right. where they were on the card. So. This might take us some time, so it, 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 instead of you know saying week in and week out that we're going to do this bunkhouse thing, I think we make this the kickoff tonight. Because I mean, I've, I've I've got the inquiry in. Did you get a special the, master yet, though? I, I don't think we're not we're not even at that yet. Okay. I mean, this is going to take some time, but I think that this is kind of. I guess the roadway to the bunkhouse. Road I mean, to bunkhouse stampede begins now. Yeah, I mean it's just. I think that if we're because we're if we're gonna do this, man, it's like not it's not a joke anymore to me. I mean this this means everything to me. Right, you're invested. I yeah. can tell. And I just sat and watched, um, like several episodes of Yellowstone. With you know, the actual like, and just really looked and watched the bunkhouse scenes. Is this watched. the is this the episode that took place on Long Island? 
I th I think everything is. I'm pretty sure that I think that the interiors are shot in Long Island, and then everything else is like British Columbia. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, I don't. I don't want to be. I mean, don't hold me to that. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that most of this it's either either shot in Long Island or the Naval Shipyard. One of the two. Right. All right. Road to the bunkhouse stampede. I'll I'll take that. Okay. I will take that. Well, listen, it's, guys. It's, it's gonna be what is it called? A mega show? Yeah, I think a mega sode. I think they call it the, the mega sode. So that'll probably be a mega sode. And adult discussion. All righty, that's good enough for me. Click this is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Heat. Producer Steve Kaufman. Title sequence and audio editing by Wesley Burleson. Graphics by Dominic D'Angelo. Theme song by Dale Oliver. Technical research by Tristan Nash. Copyright 2022. Butch and Sundance Media. Kevin, we are doing the Road to the Bunkhouse Stampede, so I'm going to assume that you want to do another one of these. Yeah, and I'll have, uh, hopefully I'll have some, some kind of legal updates on, uh, on where we are. And, uh, it's, uh, oh, uh, well, I'll, talk, I'll wait for you to talk to you and finish this, but... Um, could we like, fucking be on time next week because you had me and my son fucking a little hot? I, I, we, 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 we get like we we get a little fucking you know antsy if we don't have our shit ready. It's it's seven o'clock. Okay. Just go. Oh, oh just, fuck! We're still on the air. My bad. Are we going? Are we going? Are we going round robin here with the diva <laughs> conversation or or what? You give me that. All right, guys. Next week. <laughs>